Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hobbs, New Mexico. I'm David Finger, and welcome to the Athlete in Me TV, where we're broadcasting the air here live from the Corral Arena. We've got an exciting night of fights, and I'm here with my broadcast partner, one of the most successful fighters to come out of Southeast New Mexico, Edgar Zubia. Edgar, what do you know about this main event? Uh, Your Highness Reza and Herm Herman Rendon. You know, Herman Rendon is, uh, you know, he come up, he come from his last fight, he, he fought James Land. And, you know, he, he did really well against James Land. And now he's, he's, getting, a, he's getting this fight with uh, Your Highness. And I think, you're, I think this is a, a, a real barn burner. I think if Your Highness is in shape, uh, then he, he, he's going he's gonna to give him a lot of trouble. Well, that's a really interesting fight. When you've got a fighter who's 2-0 and versus a fighter who's 1-0, and you don't know where the, their careers are going to go at that point. It's too early in their career to tell. But when they're fighting another prospect, when you've got a, a two undefeated young prospects, even if it's only 1-0 and versus 2-0, and it's usually a good indication that both camps are very confident in their fighters, and we should have a pretty good fight. I'm really excited about this. Absolutely, absolutely. I wasn't here for the Rendon fight. You uh, did the color commentary for it. I did get a chance to watch the broadcast on Athlete and Me TV on Facebook. It was a it, I won't lie, it was a shocker. I was not <laughs> expecting James Land to lose that fight. And uh, I think James Land uh, fought a very good fight, but Rendon fought an exceptional fight for a guy who was, quite frankly, brought in as the opponent against the undefeated Lamb. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, James Land, uh, from, from what I understand, James Land uh, picked, uh, picked Rendon as, in, as, in, as his opponent for that night. And, uh, you know, it... It, 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 didn't, it didn't work out well for him. So Boxing can be a tricky sport. It really can. And it sometimes really can. you can't pick your opponent. No, for sure. But we have quite a little bit of time before the uh, fights actually go start off. I've been told by the commissioner and by promoter Cedro Castillo that we will be going on the uh, – we will – the national anthem will be at 710. Our first fight will be at 715. So we've got a little bit of time to talk about these fighters on the card. In the co-main event, uh, or one of the co-main events, is Abraham Perez. He's 1-0 from Al Albuquerque, New Mexico. I happened to be ringside for his pro debut. I won't lie, he wasn't fighting the toughest guy in the world, but he certainly was a, uh, a talented, Perez certainly put up an incredible performance. Uh, you know, his opponent, a little bit of a softer touch for your pro debut, but right. man, he, Abraham did everything he had to do, and he looked like the real deal in that fight. Uh, he's fighting a, a guy named Ke Kenneth Jamerson, who came down here from Michigan. Don't know much about him. He's 0-2, so he's got some experience. He probably, based on the records, isn't uh, expected to beat Abraham Perez. But one of the interesting things I've noticed about this is Perez, he weighed in at 112 pounds. His opponent weighed in at just over 100 pounds. Wow, that, that, that's, see, that's a lot of weight as a, as a professional. I mean, that, that is a, a lot of weight to give up. That is a lot of weight, and especially in the lower weight classes. Have you... What is your experience as a fighter when you fight a guy who's who's either overweight or or underweight? Well, when you when you have when you fight when you have a fighter that's that's overweight that that had that's carrying a little bit more weight, it's either because he's he's out of shape or you know he's just you know he's naturally bigger than you and and you don't you can you can feel those those shots those extra five pounds those extra three pounds you can feel those you can you can feel that that extra poundage and 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 it's 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 not good it's not good at all. Well, from what I could tell. Well, from my, from my observations of Abraham Perez, he is a fighter with above average punching power, with, with probably great punching power. Right. So that's probably something that is not going to bode well for Ken, Kenneth Jamerson. But you never know. At this stage of a fighter's career, especially when we're talking about four-rounders, one and bad round can throw throw a wrench in everything. Yeah, one knockdown could. You know, I mean, exactly. it's like wow, you, you get one knockdown, it, it's almost impossible to win on the scorecards. It really is. It really is next to impossible. All right, guys, uh, qu quick quick uh, little little deal here. Uh, Facebook.com uh, forward slash the athlete and me. Uh, we will be broadcasting the fights live on pay per view. Um, again, Facebook.com forward slash athlete and me. Um, get get there, and we will. Uh, you know, we'll have the fights, and hopefully, you guys can join us. Well, and I think we're gonna. I think if you're tuning in on Athlete and Me TV, if you're if you've just ordered this broadcast, right off the bat, you got a couple minutes before the first fight. I was told, like I said, 7:10 is when the national anthem will start. Right. 7:15 will be the first fight, but definitely tune back in at 7:15 because we are going to be starting with Justin Thornton from Odessa, Texas, as he takes on Isidro Portillo from Midland, Texas. Really, really intriguing uh, 
cruiserweight fight. We don't get a lot of cruiserweight fights in, uh, in New Mexico, and so it's going to be exciting to see uh, exactly what Justin Thornton brings to the table. He is making his professional debut. I haven't had a chance to talk to him. I don't know much about him. It's very rare that we go into a broadcast without knowing really anything about, about the fighter. The fighter. Yeah, yeah. So we might be we might be in for a treat. We may be in uh, to see a, you know a future champion. We may be in uh, for an exciting fight. You know, or Isidro Portillo, zero and two may be in very evenly matched. We may be have a great fight. Here. Yeah, you, you never know. You know, and especially the, you know he's coming in. He, he he wants to come in and, and make a name for himself. I'm sure he's not just coming for a paycheck. So he exactly. he wants to make a name for himself. Well, and he's gonna. I, I undoubtedly, I think everybody who steps into the ring ha certainly uh, has got a lot of courage to step into the Absolutely. ring right off the bat. And uh, to be a to step into the ring, your professional fight. I, I don't care if you're Floyd Mayweather. I don't care if you're you know Canelo Alvarez. If you're if this is your first time as a professional fight, there's going to be some <laughs> nervousness. There's going to be some, yeah. some and, and you've experienced that. In fact, the guy you fought in your professional debut Correct. is fighting on this card. Yes. John, John Smiley Herrera. John Smiley Herrera. I talked to him yesterday a little bit at, at the at the weigh-ins, and uh, you know it's kind of it was nice to reminisce. You know, hey, we've right. we, it's been. 12 years ago that, that you know that was a long time ago but uh you know he's still fighting and you know still still give it going at it so it uh, yep. he's he's uh you know he, he's fighting uh alex he uh, I, Hippolito, I think. Hippolito, yeah. right? Um and I, I believe you said he hadn't fought since 2015 so he, 2015, he's he, yeah. he's been He's been out of the game for a little bit. Hopefully, he's been training and he's in shape, and, and you know he can give us a, a good show tonight. Well, and that's a, that's a good question because I mean we've got two guys who are coming in off long layoffs now. John Herrera, I remember watching him fight you in in, in your professional debut, and I thought he 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 held his own. Uh, you know he did right. he did a good job, and I remember thinking to myself, this is a good young fighter. Yeah. I think Edgar uh, has shown uh, you know Edgar. Clearly won the fight, but man, he, he put up a good fight. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, in that. he 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 uh, he swelled my eye up, so I I, I I didn't leave unscathed for that <laughs> fight. So he, he did land his shot. So he he, he is a, he is a game fighter, and and uh, I am excited to see him fight tonight, and, and you know see what he can, what what tricks he can pull out of out of the hat. Well, he is a cagey fighter. Yep. The one thing I will say is his last fight was in Roswell, New Mexico, and he lost to a an opponent named Gene Perez. Uh, Herrera right. and Perez both were guys who generally they have upside down records. If you look, if you didn't know anything about boxing in New Mexico and you saw these guys record, you would think these guys must be terrible. But right. they were always very cagey. They'd always make a, a close fight of it. Against Perez, he was he was dropped and he was a, uh, he he lost in his hometown in Roswell. Right. He didn't fight for four years, so I know he wants to get into the win column here tonight. Hippolito, Alex Hippolito, you know, having not fought in six years, last time he fought i just was thinking about this what was the world like in 2015 you know I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean this was even you know i mean this was this was six years ago and that's a lot of time in boxing yeah, to be that, away from the ring that, that that's your prime i mean yeah. you, you only have a certain amount of time to fight and and you know six years is a long time and if he if he hasn't been training he hasn't been active in the gym you know we're we're, we're probably going to see some type of some type of ring rust i'm, I'm assuming so and that's an interesting point because I, I know in our main event fight, uh, Your Highness Reza, he actually took a fight on very short notice on the card you covered. Yes, sir. And and quite frankly, uh, I thought he looked good. He, he clearly won the fight, but you could tell he hadn't been training for that mm -hmm. fight up to that point. That's an important lesson for a young fighter. It's probably good that he got it out of the way in fight number two against a, a two and two and six fighter. But tonight is gonna it's a exactly. whole different the whole different story because you know uh, you know his his opponent is, is not coming in as opponent. He's he's coming in to take over the division. And exactly. He's, and he's he's pretty much told uh, the promotion, you know, hey, look, I, I'll beat anybody that you guys got. And so, I mean, those those are those are strong words from 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 a young man. And you know that that that's good. That's good. That that, good. That's that confidence. Uh, you like to see that. So now I'd like to see him uh, perform and do all that in the ring. Um, Your Highness, every time that I see him, uh, I love the young man. He he's he's got a wonderful talent. I mean, he's 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 great. But he's never in shape. Never in shape. After the first round, it, it's it's a it's at the whole another world. So I'm I'm hoping that he's in in really good shape tonight, and and he and he puts on a great show. I think he's going to be out of the. I think this fight's going to last more than one round. So he's really going to need to be in shape. Absolutely. Against uh, against this opponent, because this yeah. is this is a tough opponent. 
Another interesting fight we've got is Manuel Rubacalba versus JJ Medina from Lubbock, Texas. Now JJ's listed as one and zero. I'm going to be honest. I couldn't find him on Box Rec. I don't. I don't. I can't find him. That doesn't mean he's not one and zero. You know as well as I do, Box Rec can, can miss a fight, especially <laughs> if he fought in Mexico or yeah. or, or somewhere uh, somewhere a little off the beaten path. They might miss that fight. But with that being said, this this should be an interesting fight. Manuel Rubacalba does not have the flashiest record, but he never gets knocked out. He's a tough guy. He goes some rounds, and he can really uh, give you a pretty good fight. Yeah, that, that, that's quite a bit of fights, 39 fights. Right. Yeah. Well, with his record, and I'm going to pull it up right now because I did print up the fighters' records, but he does have a, quite a few losses, but only one of his losses, or excuse me, only 10 of his losses were by knockout, and uh, that was pretty impressive considering his record is 435-1. and one. Now, 10 losses by knockout. Now, you, again, you look at that record and you say, hey, you know, this guy probably isn't, isn't the world's uh, best fighter, but you look at the quality of the opposition of those 35 mm -hmm. losses, and he yeah. fought some quality guys. So this may be an opportunity for him to get a win. You know, a hard luck fighter sometimes right. doesn't get those opportunities to win. He's usually called up on a on a Friday morning saying, hey, we need you here uh, this afternoon for Can a you win. Make it? Yeah, yeah. yeah we got a fight for you tomorrow. We'll pay you a last <laughs> minute. Uh, it's a last minute fight, but we'll make it worth your time. He comes in on one day's notice, goes four rounds, loses the decision, and, uh, and goes on. And interestingly enough, as we mentioned, that he's got this fight scheduled he's got another f uh, fight scheduled in seven days against yeah. uh, Delmar Zamora who's seven and0 yeah. so this is this, this this could be something that could derail his fight uh, in next week in, in uh, uh, mescalero you know that the him having uh, fought that many fights in uh, that that opposition that that high call a quality of opposition he's got to he's got to take something from each fight so it is, it is going to be a tough fight. Even though he's lost those fights, he's, he's I'm sure he's taken something from each one of those fights, and he's going right. to be a tough fight tonight. Well, one of the things I've discovered covering fights for over 20 years for FightNews.com was that if you give a fighter like this an opportunity to win, a lot of times you're going to end up being rewarded with a fight of the night. Yep. I mean, sometimes a promoter will put a guy who's 4 and 30 against a guy who's 6 and 25, and guess yeah. what? These he guys will absolutely go to war, and that's <laughs> what I'm, I'm wondering if we're going to see here tonight. I, I hope so. I hope so. I, I mean, it, 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 it's it's got all the makings for it, right? It so really it, does. Know, just let, let's hope to. Let's hope it does. Another fighter we have: Johnny Soto from Mission, Texas. Anthony Hill from Arizona. Anthony Hill came out very mm -hmm. uh, strong in his professional career, won his first fight. Since then, a uh, 29-fight losing streak. But he's another guy who, yeah, his record looks terrible, but he's been stopped four times in his career. Yeah. 29 fights against some very good quality opposition, yep. and he's gone the distance with everybody. Yep. Soto, Soto, on the other hand, I like his style. I like it from from the cowboy hat that he comes out with, from the cowboy hat to uh, his shorts, to his demeanor. I, I like the way he fights. I like this kid. I think he's 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 got a lot of lot of potential, um, and I'm excited to see him. You know, fight this 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 rugged kid. So this rugged man. I am too. And really, the interesting thing about Soto, he lost his first fight against a guy named Diego Martinez. Right. Diego Martinez has come. He he's now two and zero. Diego Martinez is at two and zero. He's actually his. Yeah. He lost to a, a pretty good prospect. He's come back and scored a knockout in his last fight. He undoubtedly is thinking about that that 29 uh, or those 25 losses by decision for for Anthony Hill. For sure. He's probably thinking to himself, not unreasonably, if I'm one of the few men who can actually stop this guy, I might actually jump right back into the conversation of being a being a prospect. Right, right. I mean, at one and one, his career can go either direction. I mean, we really, you know, we don't know how his career is going to go, but that by no means should anybody close the book on him at one and one because no. the guy he lost to was a pretty good fighter yeah. and uh you know he's 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 looked impressive in his fight since then if he looks impressive against anthony hill you and i are going to be talking about maybe we have another young prospect coming out of the yes, southeast yes. and uh and he's undoubtedly aware of that and really when you're fighting a guy like anthony hill who's get, knows every trick in the book who knows how to go the distance mm -hmm. with anybody and everybody yeah it becomes an interesting challenge to try and be one of the rare fighters who can break through that 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 puzzle 
puzzle yeah. and score the knockout. Well, he'll, he'll be able to learn a lot from from the, all, all these younger fighters that are fighting these these experienced fighters. You know, I, I I go back and think of the very first time that I fought a, an experienced fighter like that. He had a he had a losing record, but he gave me one of the toughest fights that I had because I didn't listen because I didn't do the the things that I needed to do, um, and you know. It, with with these with these with these younger fighters fighting these guys that are more experienced, it's, it's going to give them an opportunity to really show uh, where they're at in their career. And that's that's a good point because that's why we can see this is a pretty well matched fight. Even though we got some guys whose records are upside down, these are guys yep. who g give a very good uh, good account for themselves. Tonight may give us a pretty good indication where he's at. I think tonight he's he's going to have to dig down. Both both young fighters are going right. to have to dig down and and really really fight you know really, it's, it's going to be a dog fight and, I, and I, i'm really excited to see that fight i am too and there's one well two more fights we haven't had a chance to talk about michael andrews from here in hobbs new mexico versus ira herrera lubbock texas ira herrera one and oh michael andrews two and three but i gotta say this is a pick em fight and i i, I think that we're going to be in for a real tough fight i think ira herrera is in it against a very very tough opponent michael andrews michael andrews you know his record his, his record doesn't doesn't look good at all at two and three but he is uh he's a seasoned fighter he, he's a uh, he's a very slick fighter um i'd like to see him stay uh after he finished after he throws these quick combinations make a turn and, and put more pressure on these guys uh because he likes to sit and throw punches and then and, and you know, admire the work that he does so uh, i i really i really want to see him work hard uh, I know Ira Herrera came in a little little heavy yesterday for the weigh-in, so um, he had to do, he had to lose some weight. I'm wondering if that's going to affect him today. You know, if he was able to rehydrate his you know his, to the weight that he needed to. Well, and that's a good point uh, that you bring up because Ira Herrera's professional debut was against a guy named Isaac C. Fuentes. Mm -hmm. Isaac C. Fuentes was 0-4, had been stopped at all four of his fights. Uh, Herrera knocked him out. Yep. I don't know how much we can take take from that fight. I don't know if we can make a, a, a much of an assessment based on that uh, no. fight. Michael Andrews, however, I think we can make more of an assessment because in his last fight, he fought an undefeated fighter out of Amarillo, Texas, named D Dylan Nicholson, mm -hmm. and stopped him. Scored the stoppage right here in this arena, in this venue, yep. uh, and that's back in 2019. And that was a very impressive win for him. But I think Dylan Nicholson, you know, when you looked at him, he was coming in as the favorite, yeah. and Michael uh, Michael Andrews just just broke him down. With that being said, Andrews came in at 160.6. Herrera, yep. as you said, came in overweight. I don't know what he eventually got down to. I was sent the weights, and it said 172. <laughs> so he's coming in with almost a 12-pound weight advantage. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, it, what does that say about him? Is he, right. is he is he out of shape? Did he take this fight? Hey, I'm fighting a guy with a losing record. Did he did he underestimate him? Um, and if he did, he's going to have a long night with Michael Andrews because he's not going to be able to catch him. And if he's not in shape, it's going to be a, a long night. So well, this this is I I think this has the potential to be fight of the night because, like I said, Ira Herrera one and zero, but can't we don't know what yeah. exactly to make of him just yet i'm not dis uh, disregarding right. ira herrera as a fighter but we need to see a few more uh, performances from him before we can assess where he's at yeah, and he's, he's certainly took on the on the plus side he's got confidence yep. in taking this tough opponent for his second fight a guy who knocked out and undefeated Dylan Nicholson in his last fight. Yes. On the negative, he's coming in a little overweight, and uh, and Andrews is fighting in his hometown. This is this, this is, is Andrews' this is, hometown. This is, home, so. this is backyard. So I'm exactly. I'm hoping for Andrews. To, you know, he, he is a local fighter, and I'm hoping that he, he puts on a great performance tonight, and he he shows that he's a he's a top notch fighter from from this area. <laughs>
gonna have to take that hat off. <laughs> now that was an excellent national anthem and we are getting ready for our first fight of the night. And that's gonna be Justin Thornton versus Isidro Portillo. Well, Justin Thornton just entered the ring, and uh, I can't, I, I have to say, you know, we talked about not knowing what to expect with Justin Thornton. Well, right now, he looks apart. He, he looks very fit. He looks very ready. Every now and then, you'll see a guy making his pro debut. They'll come into the ring, and there'll be some telltale sign that maybe this is not going to be his night. Right? His night. You know, usually they're wearing tennis shoes instead of boxing <laughs> shoes or something like that. But, right. But he looks, he looks very competent. He looks very ready. And... Uh, and he's wearing boxing shoes, so that's a, that's a good sign. He, and he matches, so yeah. and, uh, it, it, that's good. That's good. Yes, his, his trunks don't say Jones or somebody else. <laughs> Someone else's last name. Yeah. Yeah. Now for Isidro Portillo, who came into this fight weighing 193.2, he's making his way into the ring now. And again, Isidro Portillo, 0-2, lost uh, both of his uh, professional fights by knockout. One to the aforementioned James Land, uh, you know, who was a very good, good young prospect in his own right before, uh, you know, getting running into our main event fi uh, fighter, uh, uh, you know, Herman Rondon in his last fight. But uh, James Land, no shame in that. He also was knocked out by Oscar, Esp uh, Oscar Espinosa, a fighter you're familiar with. Correct. Yeah. And I've, I've got to say, you know. We, you can't really judge a fighter when he's 2-0 because you don't really know uh, much about his opposition. Cedro Portillo, I'm not going to lie, it's a strike if he's 0-2 with two knockout losses, but uh, you never know. I mean, he fought two solid guys. This this could be a, a, a tough fight here. Well, well, we'll we'll definitely find out shortly, huh? All right. And a, a guy who's 0-2, who, who is truly confident in himself, who thinks he just got, you know, had an off night, he's got to recognize he's got to turn it around tonight. If he's yeah, going to he, be a professional boxer, he needs to win here tonight. Yeah, he, he, he absolutely needs to win because he can't, he, he can't continue on the losing streak. With an 0-3, who, who's really going to want to put you on, on, uh, on a card other than just as an opponent? So. Right. Well, and that's the thing. We look at a guy like Anthony Hill, who's fighting later tonight with a 1 in 29 record. Anthony Hill still is a durable guy, doesn't get knocked out. When you're 0 and 2 and you've been knocked out twice, you've really got to start establishing uh, yourself as a professional fighter. Even if if you're not going to become a contender, you want to start getting some of those uh, some of those wins. You want to start earning a reputation of, of, of being tough and going some rounds. Because, like you said, uh, you know, you start getting to 0 and 4, 0 and 5. If That's all, okay, like we said, but right. you you can't get stopped each time. You know, you 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 gotta you gotta put in those rounds so that so that other other promoters, other fighters will, will be able to fight you. Exactly. Well, the 
referee is Robert Velez, a very se uh, seasoned referee here in the state of New Mexico. I've covered many a fight with Robert Velez as the third man, and so I think we've uh, definitely got a lot of experience uh, when it comes to uh, the referee in this fight. And a very slow start to the first round, both a little bit of a feeling out process. Justin Thornton not throwing a whole lot. I'm gonna be honest, Edgar, both these guys look a little dry. Yeah, they, there's, there's no sweat on either one. Ooh, usually that indicates they didn't work out very much and you can get caught cold like Thornton, it's happening right now. Thornton's walked into some pretty big shots and we're <laughs> talking about Portillo as the 0-2 guy. Well, <laughs> he, you know, he's not fighting like an 0-2 guy right no, now. Sir. He's fighting like a guy who recognizes that he needs a big win and he's out to get it. Both guys just pawn with that jab. Oh, there's a good right hand, another one. Again, Thornton, uh, Thornton came out looking confident, but again, coming out dry as a bone, both men did, and that's, that's usually not a good sign. It, that sets you up for a big shot early on if you're not properly warmed up, but uh, they're, they're certainly uh, getting a workout now as both men work on the inside. Nice right hand. Both guys are just winging right hands. Well, I'm not, I don't see them setting up their punches very well, but uh, with that being said, uh, they're, they're finding a home with the right hand, particularly Portillo, who's, who's been uh, pretty effective with that right hand. So the question may be not uh, who sets up their punches better, but who can just keep up, keep up the pace for the longer. Absolutely, both, both guys uh, doing a lot of wrestling as well. A lot of leaning. But and both men are starting to show the first sign that they might be getting a little bit, a little bit winded. Again, not a very high high uh, punch output from either fighter, but when they do start throwing punches, they, they, they throw punches with meaning. So uh, they have been pawing a little bit with the uh, with the jab there. Oh, good right hand. That was a good right hand, but Portillo fires back with a combination upstairs. I will say Thornton does look like he's anticipating those counter shots coming in. He might be a little bit gun shy there. That's something his cornerman might be talking about uh, with him. Good left hand from Thornton. But Portillo again fires back with a nice combination upstairs and he has Thornton, Thornton reeling there. I think Thornton might be hurt. That, that right hand seems to have rattled him. Thornton's looking down as he's punching and getting caught. Well, and that's the other thing. He's not doing a very good job of covering up. I notice that he's sort of leaning forward as he's covering up, and that's, that's I think, making it look worse than it might actually be. But with that being said, oh, there's good, good right, right hand, hand from Thornton, and he's got Portillo on the ropes now. <laughs> well, that was a pretty fun first round, I gotta say, Edgar. I mean, that was a good seesaw, seesaw fight, back and forth action. And, you know, when you got a guy who's 0-2 fighting a guy who's making his pro debut, it's, it's easy for particularly the guy who's 0-2 to come into the fight and say, you know what, this may, you know, I, I got paid. I just got to, I just got to get it, do, do enough to get my paycheck. But that's definitely not the case. That is not the case at all. <laughs> Isidro Portillo is here to win and he's fighting, he's fighting, uh, giving it his all. Justin Thornton, not doing a bad job either. No, he's got, you know, he, he is lunging a little bit. Both guys are swinging with the, with the looping right hands. They want to land the right hands and, and they both have been landing the right, right. hands. So, uh, it should be an interesting second round. Well, I can't remember who said it. I, I think it was Al Bernstein uh, said it once in a fight broadcast he, he covered, but he's like, you know, if just sitting there throwing the right hand works, then just sit there and throw the right hand. I mean, and that's what yeah. they're doing. You know, you don't, maybe they don't need to set it up with a jab. Maybe they just need to just keep throwing that right hand because it is working for both men. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. Right? All right, second round. Here we go. Well, what would you say if you were in the, the corner of Justin Thornton, what would you say to him in between rounds? Well, first off, I would tell him not to lean, lean forward as much as he's leaning. You know, keep, keep, an, keep an eye on your opponent when you're punching. Because when he's throwing, he, he wants to throw just that loop in right hand, but then he's closing his eyes. He, he loses, uh, loses sight of his opponent. Um, and that's when Portillo can, can, you know, capitalize and has capitalized on him. 
good job again. See there. You nice can right hand from right Portillo, hand. and well, down close. goes down goes Justin Thornton, oh, no, and what? they're calling it a knockdown. It, I think it might have been a push, but it was it started with a punch, and so that's uh, Robert Velez called it a knockdown. I don't think it's an uh, it's a bad call because that punch clearly hurt him. And let's and see if Portillo jumps on him. He's taking his time. I was about to ask you, what would you say if you were in Portillo's corner? But I, I, I'm guessing you'd say keep doing what you're doing because right doing now it. it's working. <laughs> it ain't broke. Keep, keep, keep doing it. There you go. Well, and that's one of the things that is very tough for a young fighter. And uh, and I know you as a trainer and you as a former fighter understand it is over. It is over. They waved it off. I was about to say that when you how to deal with being hurt, how to deal with being in trouble is a tough thing for a young fighter, uh, especially a fighter making his pro debut to, to deal with. And J Justin Thornton struggled with that. When he got hit with that right hand, he didn't really have an answer. You talked about uh, him lunging a little bit. Also, he was, this was a, a classic time for a fighter to clinch, to, to, to hold on and, and clear the cobwebs. And Thornton didn't didn't do that. He's, uh, you know, it's it's undoubtedly a disappointing setback for his pro debut. But I think if he, you know his cornerman watches this tape and see, uh, they're going to see some things that they can improve on for the next time. For Isidro Portillo, excellent win, first win of his career. He's now stands at one and two with one knockout, and uh, I think that that was a, a pretty exciting fight for the young uh, young cruiserweight. Our next fight is going to be Manuel Rubacaba from Mexico, 435 and 1, as he takes on JJ Medina from Lubbock, Texas. Now, this was an exciting fight between uh, two young fighters who uh, fought very aggressively, a little bit raw. These were guys. These guys were were a little bit raw. They were kind of winging winging some heavy punches against the veteran Rubacaba, who's got 40 fights. Uh, with a record of 435 and one, but only stopped 10 times. I don't think we're gonna see that. I think we're gonna see more of a technical fight in our next fight. Yes, it, it, I, I definitely agree with you. I think uh, JJ Medina, you know, that it, that's 40 fights for your own, you know, you find a guy with 40 fights, um, regardless of, you know, his win or loss ratio, you know, that's that's still a lot of fights to fight with, you know, when you only have one pro fight. So um, he's gonna have to fight a little bit and, and, and We'll see this next this next fight. Well, one of the questions I, I would have to ask, as a fighter who who was a young prospect fighting a, a KG veteran like Manuel Rubicalva in your career, and as a trainer, uh, let's wait for the announcement of this fight. Congratulations to Mr. Portillo for getting Excellent. his first win. Well, once again, a great win for Isidro Portillo. Uh, gave a lot of respect to uh, his opponent, and, uh, jo uh, Justin Thornton, and respect for his power. And I think we saw that in the fight. Th Thornton definitely had some punching power there, and when he landed that right hand, he certainly he certainly could do damage with it. Yeah, he, de he definitely rocked uh, Portillo. Bo both guys rocked each other you know, right. quite a bit, so it was, power's definitely there. 
Well, again, we're going to our next fight. Uh, Jonathan J.J. Medina uh, listed as 1-0. and I couldn't find uh, his, his previous fight, but uh, with that being said, his opponent, Manuel Rubicalva, I, I'm familiar with him, and I just noticed this. His last fight was a decision loss to a debuting Conrado Martinez here uh, in Club La, at Club La Sierra back in August. So, I, uh, Edgar, do you remember seeing that fight? I don't remember seeing that fight. Um, man, no, I don't, actually. Well, he, he, it's it's listed as his last fight, but I will I will admit I saw one of his fights in Midland, Texas, uh, uh, about two years ago before the okay. pandemic okay. and I don't want to say uh, it was a forgettable fight but <laughs> it was a very workmanlike performance for him it was four rounds he lost the four round decision the decision was not in dispute it's probably not the fight that that jumped out on that night in Midland Texas right, right. and uh, I will I will say though uh, we talked about he is a guy with uh, a 4 and 35 record See, J.J. Medina doesn't have much of a corner here either. versus Rubicabra, the second fight of the night. Contested at 135 pounds. Now, when you're fighting a guy with a, a record of four and 35, does it does it get tempting as a fighter to, to just look at that record and maybe fight uh, a fight that's not in your best interest, a fight that probably your cornerman might not be in favor of? Uh, just looking looking at that record and saying, you know, not even caring about the fact that he goes the distance with everybody. Uh, can can basically can we see a situation where JJ Medina gets taken out of his fight fight game? Yes, because he, you know he says, okay, look, you know this guy's been stopped this many times in the last ten fights. You know what? I'm gonna go stop it. I'm you know, I'm I'm the young hungry lion. I'm gonna go get this. Kid. But he could walk into some shots. Right now he's he, he's working pretty good behind the jab, keeping his high hands, good left hook. Well, you some of you watching are probably wondering how does a guy who's four and thirty-five get approved for a, for any fights? Well, if you're watching this, that pretty much answers your question. Here's a guy who's he's coming to win. He's he's not laying down. You know, he's he's throwing punches and, and Manuel Rubicalva, he's moving forward and when he got hit he didn't look for the soft spot on the canvas to, to take a knee so he's a tough guy and he's fighting a pretty good fight but uh, right now I gotta say JJ uh, Medina uh, fighting a fighting intelligent fight he's not getting taken out of his game I think Manuel Rubicalva would love to turn this into a slugfest and JJ uh, Medina is, is wisely using his size advantage and his reach advantage uh, very effectively I like his high guard. He, he, his hands are, are, are really high. And nice hooks and uppercuts. Medina looks sharp. He really does. And, and it's not called a knockout. It's called a slip. I didn't see the punch. I, I was temporarily blocked. Uh, my view was temporarily blocked from that. But uh, I will say, though, that... Uh, you're right. I mean, I'm, I'm impressed with Medina so far. I, like I said, I didn't know what we were, what to expect coming into this, and so far, I'm liking what I'm seeing. This is a very effective fighter. That was a nice three-punch combination there. Yeah. For a young uh, fighter, uh, Medina, I did look over at his corner, and he's only got one cornerman. Uh, at this level, you, you, you do want to have more than just one cornerman. And that's a good point. I... I, what I really like for Medina is he's going to the body effectively. I really like his body attack. That's something that you don't see a lot of times in young fighters. Sometimes they headhunt a little more. Yeah. They don't set things up with a body attack. And against a cagey guy like Manuel Rubicalva, who's been, been the distance quite a few times, that body attack can really pay some big dividends. If you're really looking for a knockout in this fight, that's how you do it. Not by swinging for the fences and trying to land that one big punch. Put, put the shot together and, and up and down. Medina is switching stances there, and when he gets inside, I don't know if you noticed that, but he's, he's done I that did a couple notice. times. 
And I've seen that from fighters before. I don't know if it's a strategy with Medina or if it's just an opportunity to to uh, just reset and recharge the battery. But so far, he hasn't he hasn't been caught. You have to be careful switching from southpaw to orthodox when you're standing right in front of your opponent. That, that close, when you're, when you're standing that close, you will <laughs> most times you end up on the campus. There was a, a fight I remember a long time ago, uh, Anthony Baby Jones versus Edwin Rosario from Puerto Rico. Okay. And Baby Jones was out, he was boxing circles around uh, Rosario until he switched from southpaw to orthodox standing in front of one of the hardest punchers in Puerto Rican history. And uh, yeah, that fight didn't end up going so well for him after that. But uh, it was it was a lesson for a lot of young fighters uh, uh, in that particular that particular fight. You want to be careful with uh, switching stances in front of your fighter. Uh, if you're going to do that, make sure that there's plenty of uh, plenty of real estate between you and your opponent. Absolutely. But then you have fighters that like Terrence Crawford that, that do it so effectively. And, right. And you're like, Man, it's, it's beautiful when he's able to do that. You know, if, he's, if he can't figure out what fighter with one stance, he, he just simply switches it to the other. And, doesn't miss a beat. Well, I will say about watching Terrence Crawford, if you're a young fighter, I remember talking to a boxing coach years ago, and he said Roy Jones was the worst thing to happen to boxing trainers uh, in, in a long time. And I said, what do you mean by that? And he said, Roy Jones can get away with making mistakes in the ring, and young fighters emulate that, and they don't realize if you're not Roy Jones, you're not going to get away with that. So yeah, I think that's a that, that might fall in that category. You're Terrence right. Crawford can get away with an awful lot because he's probably one of the best, if not the best fighter in, in, in boxing. I, I have to agree with you. Well, we're starting here in the second round, and I, I'm liking, again, what I'm seeing from, from Jonathan J.D. Medina. But he is getting caught. He is getting caught trying to swing, and he got caught again with a couple left hooks. One thing I do kind of wonder is Emmanuel Ruokalba, with his three, 435 and one record, with his 40 fights, he's never knocked out anyone. Wow. Now, I don't... Again, when you're you're fighting as an opponent, you're usually not brought in to, to score the knockout. But there is a possibility JJ Medina tasted the power of Rubicalba and said, you know what, I'm I'm willing to take a few more chances now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, he is getting caught. He's taking some shots that and maybe he shouldn't shouldn't be taking. He, he seems like a really slick fighter. Uh, puts his punches together. So. Um, and that's a good point. You should probably. It's never a good idea to. Uh, to, to be willing to take one punch to, uh, to land two. Uh, it's probably better to, to take right. zero punches to land two. Right, right. And then, you know, with him fighting this, you know, Rubicabra with the losing record, you know, like we said earlier, you know, Medina may be saying, hey, I'm just going to go out there and I'm going to muscle this guy. I'm going to stop this guy. Um, and maybe didn't play into to a game plan that, that it originally had. I'm not saying that's the case, but, I mean, it could be. Well, the other thing, too, is, let's be honest, uh, Rubicabra knows exactly what it's like to fight in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth round. Yep. Uh, this is not a six rounder, but this is something that JJ Medina may, may be getting into some unfamiliar territory here. And uh, and it does look like he is slowing down just a little bit. I think he's still in control of this round, but his pace is slowing down. And you're right, he is starting to get tagged with some, some shots that I don't think he was getting caught with in the first round. No, and he, he's, he's pretty square right in front of right, right in front of Rubicaba. Uh, you know, high guard still, but he is getting caught with them looping shots. What would you say if you were in his corner in between rounds to address that? Um, you know what? Give, give yourself some room. You know, don't smother yourself. Stay on top and put your punches together. Put your punches together. And we saw him switch there right there. And it did look like as he switched, he did get caught with a shot coming in by uh, a nice left hook from Rubicalba and a right hand from Rubicalba. These these shots may not be landing flush, but they are they are catching him. So we, are, we might be seeing J uh, JJ Medina slowing down just a little bit. If I was in his corner, I, I'd probably say, you know what, take that knockout out of your mind. Let's just win this next round. Let's get the decision wrapped up, and then start. We'll worry about. We worry about trying to go for the knockout, knockout after that. Absolutely, and I think that's a lot, that's a big case with a bunch of young fighters. You know, they they, they want to make that knockout. They want to they want to 
could get that knockout. I see that with, with some of the young tra- young kids that I train. They want to knock. They want to. They want to be a Mike Tyson. They want to. They want to do all these knockouts. But if you put your punches together, if you relax a little bit and just put your punches together, you'll have the same effect. Well, a lot easier without taking as many shots. Um, it's easier said than done. Of course. <laughs> but. That, that's what I would like to see from, from Medina. Just put your punches together a little bit. And, you know, try not to, not to overpower him right now. Just, just box. Well, that's the old adage in boxing. It's the punches you don't see that hurt you. And so that you don't be working to knock out the guy. Don't be loading up with the punches. Work to see, uh, hit him with a shot that he doesn't see. Yeah, and then that, that's the shot that's going to that's gonna end the night for him. Rubalcaba had a little bit of trouble with his mouth guard. Uh, for a second there, I was thinking to myself, he was waving him, uh, waving off the fight. And I said, well, that would have been a very unexpected end to a fight with this 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 veteran. But he is uh, was just having trouble with his mouth guard. He is now, uh, again, moving forward. And Medina's boxing a little bit. He's not going yeah. forward. So uh, is, that, is he tired? Uh, I think maybe that was something his corner told him. He said, you know what? Just set up your shots a little better. Uh, box, you don't have to, to come out and swing for the fences. He's boxing a, a little bit more effectively here, but Rubicalo is, is is still coming forward, and he's... Oh, no, got caught again. Yeah, he's like that Energizer bunny, always just, just munch, uh, punching he forward. Just keeps coming and coming. Yep. Rubicalo complained about a rabbit shot. It was a little bit... I don't think it was intentional, but it was a... I like the way uh, Medina's uh, uh, doubling up with that right hand, right uppercut, and then a straight right hand. Oh, good. Oh, good, good right hand from Rubicalbo, yeah. One thing I have noticed in this round is we're not seeing the same body attack from Medina that no. we saw in the first two rounds. I don't know if he's just kind of given up on it or if he's the, the just same. focusing on the boxing. Yeah. Well... There, he switches stance again. Good straight. Well, this is a much more technical round. Uh, kind of the r- fight I was expecting to see at the beginning of this fight. You know, yeah. a little bit more, more of the KG veteran, uh, KG veteran on the outside of these long jabs and maybe a slower pace than we saw in these first two rounds, but. Boys are going after us. They're, they're definitely giving us a fight. They are. Well, I think uh, Medina's winning this round on activity for, for sure. Yeah, but the, the steam of, on his punches are, aren't there anymore. It doesn't, doesn't seem like. And I would tend to agree. It does look like the, that he's lost a little bit of steam on his punches. Maybe he hurt us because now he's throwing up some heavy <laughs> now shots he now. <laughs> <laughs> he's back at the southpaw stance and that and looks no, well, he's staying there. Staying there for secondary. Looked like he was going to yeah. switch. Wait, and it's working for him. He's yeah. Stay there. He's back to conventional. Well, and Rubicalba, again, like I said, he's, he's a guy with, despite his upside-down record, he moves forward. Uh, he certainly makes a fight of it. I mean, if I'm a promoter, I would want this guy on speed dial. If I got a young fighter, this is the kind of guy who's going to give him a good fight but shouldn't win the fight, but will give him a good fight, and, and we're seeing that here. Absolutely. You know, a good fighter to build, build a young fighter. Exactly. Good third round. Well, Edgar, I, I'll be honest. I've got it three and zero. Oh. I mean, for Rubicalba, I not for Rubicalba, excuse for me, Medina. for Medina, but uh, for Rubicalba, I would say, as a as a veteran, I mean, does he just, I mean, does he change anything with what he's doing uh, in this last round, or is it is he going to go for the knockout that he's never had in forty fights? Uh, I think he, to be honest, I think he's going to come out the, the same way that he's come out these last three rounds, um, and I. I 
hope he doesn't. I hope he comes out and, and, and tries to get that knockout, but I, I just don't see that. Uh, Medina, I hope Medina comes out and, and really gives us gives, gives everything that he's got this last round. Um, he, he, did, he, did, he did look like he slowed down a little bit that third round. He did, and I'm not sure if part of that was strategy or part of it was because he was getting winded. I think maybe a little bit of both. Yeah. Uh, I think his corner probably told him, you know, let's try and box a little bit more. He did that effectively. One thing I would have say to him if I was in his corner is don't forget the body attack that was working beautifully for you in the first round. And uh, even though it's 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 a four round fight in the fourth uh, in the fourth round, you're when you have a young fighter fighting a guy like Manuel Rubacalba, you're, you're not just fighting this fight, you're also molding and teaching him things to use in future fights. And right, so I right. think that's something is don't give up on the body attack, uh, you know, especially with a guy who's gritty like this, especially with a guy who's going to go some hard rounds. If you're going to score the knockout, that's how you, how you get the knockout win. Absolutely. Good shot by Medina. Yep. There's a short left hand that looked like it, I wouldn't Logan. say, it, it, it maybe caught the attention of uh, Rubacalba. It buckled him just a little bit. He smiled, which as you know, when a fighter gets <laughs> punched hurt. and smiles, yeah, that basically tells you, yeah, good shot. It did actually hurt. And I think that, you know what, I think Medina's corner told him the exact same thing you said they should have told him. Go out and finish this fight strong. One thing I've seen in this round that I haven't seen in the previous three is uh, for at, at several moments, we've seen Rubo ta uh, taking backward steps. He's been moving back, which is not something we haven't seen before. So I think that that pressure has, has paid some dividends. Yeah. When you when you keep you keep walking forward and you keep getting hit, it, you know you at some point you make a you have to make an adjustment, right? Or you go down. There again, Medina. We, we're seeing just one big looping shot at a time. He was able to put them shots together right there. He, I think he would be able to get Rubacaba out of here. Well, and that was an example of Rubacaba's uh, experience, though. He got caught in the ropes there. He started taking a couple a couple decent shots, and what does he do? What does a veteran do in a situation like that? He holds. And that's a, a sharp contrast to our first fight of the night where uh, we had a young fighter who had never experienced that before <laughs> and didn't didn't know how to respond and ended up getting stopped. So yeah. Rubacaba definitely, you can see that veteran bag of tricks. Well, this, this, this fight will teach Medina a uh, definitely a lot. I mean, he, it doesn't look like he's going to get uh, Rubicopper out of here, but uh, at the end of the night, he, he is going to get the win, and hopefully he learns a lot from this fight. Well, I think, I think so, too. I think this is the, exactly the kind of fight that you want for a young fighter. Uh, you want to give him this opportunity to see some things he hasn't seen before without seriously threatening him, without seriously uh, upending the apple cart, if you will. And I think that's exactly what we got uh, here tonight. And it was a good fight. You know, Ruba Calvin, the other thing about him is he's a cagey guy who comes to fight. He comes forward. He gives you a tough fight. He, you know, he's not just a, a bag of trips. He, he, he's, he's, a, he's a fighter. Well, second fight in the books. Yeah, second fight in the books. I have it a shutout Absolutely. for JJ Medina. A really good fight for him. Yes. Another one of those fights where you get a KG veteran who, uh, upside down record, but I guarantee you, Manuel Rubicalvo's phone will be ringing off the hook this uh, this next week. <laughs> yeah, and he'll, he'll definitely get more fights. Yeah. He'll definitely get more fights. You know, and, and it's a, this, is a, this is a good win for Medina, you know, and, and I'm, I'm excited to see him in the future. Well, we may see him, we may see both these fighters here pretty soon. Uh, this Medi Medina did a great job again. Rubicalba is scheduled to fight next week at uh, Mescalero at the Inn of Mountain Gods in Mescalero. Uh, I don't know if that fight is still on, but if it is, 
I, I, I think he's I think he's ready to go another four rounder here next week. I don't, I don't think there there's anything to, uh, from this fight that would uh, preclude that. Well, the fight in, in, uh, in Mesolero, what do you think about Barrera and, and De Leon? Uh, I'll, I'll be honest. After the Holyfield fight, I, I, I'm kind of like, you know what? I, I just hope we don't see any more yeah. retired fighters coming back. That Holyfield fight really kind of was a, like a, a knife in the heart. It, it is, you know, and even the Mike Tyson and, and, and Roy Jones. Well, it was, it was ended up to La Voz. Again, we might see Rufa Calva at the uh, Mescalero card with Manuel, uh, Marco Antonio Barrera in the main event, and uh, I, uh, I hope it's, I hope the main event's a good fight. I, I, I do too. I'm just, I'm, I'm just a little bit, a little bit gun shy after the Holyfield fight. To, but the Holyfield fight, the thing is, they released some of those training videos of Holyfield, and, and you had a bad feeling after seeing him in training. Yeah. Unlike when, you know, with Tyson, you know, they, they Tyson looked like he was like pretty beast, sharp. Yeah, like, he really wow. did. And then, then you get up there and you, and you see the fight, and it's, it's, it's right. I mean, not, not even where it came. Oh, no. It, it, was, it was more of a concert than anything else. So. Yeah. Awesome. Good job, Mr. Medina. Great fight for the young fighter, and uh, he looks like a, you know, like I said, you watch a, a young fighter, and you don't know if you're watching a future world champion, but you know if you're not. Well, I can say right now, we don't know if we're watching a future world champion. He lo definitely has got a lot of lot of talent. He's yes. definitely a good fighter. We may have, uh, I can't say he's a future contender, but you can't rule it out. And that's what you're looking for when you're a young fighter at this stage of his career. You don't, you basically don't want people to close the book on you no, no, no. before you get that opportunity. And, and right now, I, he's definitely a fighter I would keep an eye on in the future. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll be seeing him soon again, you know, here on, on the Hard Knock promotion. I think so. Well, our next fight is scheduled to be a fighter you're very familiar with, John Smiley Herrera, as he takes on Alex Hippolito from Lubbock, Texas. This is John Herrera, 24 fight veteran. I will say this about Herrera, you know, he hasn't fought in four years. Uh, his last fight Gene, uh, was to Gene Perez, and Gene Perez was coming into that fight with a 1-9-1 and one record. Uh, I think I think that was a little bit of a heartbreaker for Herrera because usually Herrera was in against guys where he was the opponent, yeah. and then he would lose like a majority decision or a split decision or or, or really give a tough fight mm -hmm. as the uh, as the opponent. Right. And the uh, the Gene Perez fight was the fight where he the, the roles were reversed. He was fighting in his hometown. He was the main event fighter. He was uh, the guy who was looking to to get the big win against a guy with the upside down record. And uh, it, it didn't happen for him against Gene Perez, and that was way back in 2017. He hasn't fought since. I'm curious to see how he does in in, uh, in this, you know, with this much time off. Herrera is a guy who sometimes fights down to his opponent's level. If he's not fighting the top guy, he'll make a tougher fight of it than he needs to. Uh, but again, you know, four years out of the ring, hard to know what to say. You know, we don't know what to expect. Yeah, and he, you know, he, he whenever whenever I when Whenever I fought him and watching him fight throughout his career, Herrera's really a defensive fighter. He, uh, you know, he, he's, to me, I remember, remember uh, saying that he looked like kind of like a Josh Clotty, you know, always right. held his hands up and uh, blocks really good, but didn't, re didn't return fire. So I agree with you. You know, he does fight to, to his opposition, and I'm hoping that tonight, um, with with Hippolito, he, he you know he, he lets his hands move. Um, you said you did say Hippolito hadn't fought in 
2015. 2015, yep. So both, both men are coming in uh, with long layoffs, so we should see some rust. Uh, I mean, it's, it's given. Well, Ippolito had a 3-4-1, and one, has a 3-4-1 and one record. And, uh, you know, he his last fight was a four-round decision loss to Edgar Cantu. Uh, before that, he, he was held to a draw by uh, Jose uh, Osorio. And so, you know, I mean, he's he, he's a cagey guy, too. He's definitely uh, got, got the ability to go some rounds. You know, I remember Herrera watching his career. I remember holding him, holding Keenan Carbajal, who was a nephew of a legendary former champion, Michael Carbajal. He held Keenan Carbajal, who was a, a good young prospect, to a draw. Uh, lost the majority of the decision to Brandon Holmes, who was an undefeated fighter here in the state of New Mexico, a very good fighter. And, and you know, uh, Smi Smiley Herrera, on one judge's scorecard, it was an even fight. You know, and it was a very close fight. He's, you know, he's also had a, a, a split decision, or excuse me, a draw to Antonio Martinez, who was 1-0 at the time. And, of course, his fight with you, you know, I mean, he, he, he gave... Uh, last four years i mean was he training was he keeping in shape i mean even if he was he's going to have ring rust but i mean if he just completely walked away from the sport and then a couple months ago said you know what i had to get back in the boxing <laughs> that, ring that, know, may that, be tough. That, that is tough you know that is that is really really tough well there's hipolito coming into the ring today he looks ready well he does lot of answers to those questions here in just a moment only one man ever blew him out that was Jason Sanchez and Jason Sanchez is a world-class fighter yes, sir. and so against Alex Hippolito another fighter big question mark you know and and like you like you said what did he do during the dur during the interim? What did he do during these last four years? I mean, was he training? Was he keeping in shape? I mean, even if he was, he's going to have ring rust. But I mean, if he just completely walked away from the sport and then a couple months ago said, you know what, I had to get back in the boxing <laughs> that, ring, that know, may that, be tough. That, that is tough, you know. That is, that is really, really tough. Well, there's Hippolito coming into the ring today. He looks ready. Well, he does. And you know, John, John has always been one of those fighters that just really seems to he never rattled away. He's always had the same demeanor he every, really does. every time. Um, and that, that, I think that's a good thing for a fighter, in, in, a, in a way. It is. You know, you don't rattle him. He's got a great poker face. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because you, you ever watch The Last Dance, that Michael Jordan documentary? Yep, yep. I remember they showed that that uh, they showed Larry Bird when his coach, uh, you know, he was coaching Indianapolis, and, and they showed uh, his face when they they scored uh, that winning shot. When he scored a winning shot, and, and and you know, Bird had just won. You know, their team had just won, and there was no emotion on his face yeah, whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the that's the type of that's the fighter, the type of athlete that he is. Well. Right. I mean, you will get that occasional smile from him. <laughs> Amazing, John is still at a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> well, coming out of uh, Johnny Melendez's gym out of Lubbock. Right? Normally, John Melendez is got some pretty good scrappers, so uh, good boxers and come forward fighters, so we'll see.
normally hate it when you've got a fighter with uh, identical trunks as his opponent, but fortunately, John Herrera's got a got an epic beard, so it's gonna, <laughs> we're not going to have any trouble keeping the two of them. There you go. Keeping track of the two of them. I will say though, you know, if if I were either fighter's manager, this is the perfect comeback fight for you because yeah. you're, you're fighting a guy with a, a record that's 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 similar. It's an evenly matched fight, but there's also somebody with a lot of ring rust. So this is a very well matched fight, and oh, and Herrera's Herrera's is boxing right now, and Hippolito is coming out aggressive. You talked about Herrera being a defensive uh, wizard as a professional fighter. Well, he's definitely going to have to get shake off those cobwebs off those skills because he's got an opponent who's coming out strong. Yep. Good, good combination. Good combination by Ibrahim. And he, he's, using, he's using the... Uh, he looked like he was using the left hand to pull down uh, John Herrera's left hand and coming over with the right hand. He also caught him with a good body shot there, which is a, also a good move for a guy, especially with a tight guard like uh, like uh, John Herrera. I mean, he's, a, he's got a really tight guard. He's a really good defensive fighter, like you said, but there is an opening there to the body, and he took yeah. advantage of it. Well, it's, it, it's also like how he got stopped by Sanchez. It was a, it was a vicious uh, body shot. And I can tell that, you know, even though he's a, his, he hasn't gained a lot of weight, he does have a little bit of a soft, soft, uh, Soft uh, midsection. Midsection. So yeah, thank you. So I think he's definitely there to. Definitely, if I were in his corner, I'd say go to the body, test out that body a little bit. But you can see those that, that defensive skill of John Herrera starting to come back. You saw that right hand and Herrera. Herrera uh, blocked it perfectly, stepped back, and it looked like it landed from a certain angle. But it actually just kind of followed his hand and didn't didn't hit his chin. So I mean, it's a really good defensive performance for for. Uh, Herrera here. I can see his defensive skills are starting to come back into place, but with that being said, if this is the way the fight goes for four rounds, I think, you know, Alex Hippolito is going to have his hand raised in victory, so Herrera is going to have to pick up the pace here. I agree. Hey, good right hand by him, too. Oh, nice left hook. It was blocked by Hippolito, but it was still a, a good shot. <laughs> Body Another shot. body shot. Head there, and I don't think he should uh, give away anything. We were talking about his poker face. That was probably an instance where he probably should have kept his poker face because exactly. you don't want to tell the judges. You're, you're telling the judges that shot landed. If they were on the sidelines saying, hey, did that shot land? Well, you just basically told them, yes, it did. You know, a lot of these shots from Hippolito are, are landing on, on John Moretta's uh, arms. And, and I wonder if that Nice shot, a perfect cover shot at the bell. Oh, wow. Wow, right at the what bell, saved by the bell. Ooh, and he's still on some wobbly legs. Hippolito's still wobbly a little bit. Wow. Well, I've got to say, uh, Herrera, he, he came alive there at the last minute. That was a picture perfect, picture perfect time counter punch. Yeah. And you know, I, I kind of wonder. You heard that. You heard the 10 second notice. Yeah. Do you think that Hippolito heard it as well and maybe just let his guard down, protect yourself at all time? But I kind of wonder if maybe he said, "Hey, the round's about to end," and it's kind of like you know, <laughs> dropped his hands. Dropped right? his hands. Yeah, it's like in football. If you uh, <laughs> if, if the, the clock's about to run and you you blink, next thing you know, there's Tim Tebow running to the end zone. <laughs> exactly. You know, hey, that was that was a pretty. I, I believe it was a right hand by John Herrera. Uh, it, was, it was it was nice, nice and short, and he and he was catching he was catching Hippolito there towards the end. Uh, we'll see how the second round plays off. We'll see if Hippolito has got his, his cobwebs cleared out, and looks like his feet are are under him now. Well, one of the interesting things I talked about is in Herrera's fight with Gene Perez, he was he was the one who suffered that flash knockdown, and I think it took him out of his fight. He never quite bounced back from that. And as you said, in a four-round fight, it's hard to, to get out of that hole in a four-round fight. Although Hippolito is certainly coming on strong. He threw a nice left hand, left hand there, and he's got John Herrera in the corner now. But a lot of a lot of those shots are being blocked, and I hope I hope Hippolito doesn't doesn't tire himself out. 
and John John Hedera is really setting up a good trap in that sense. If that's if that's the case, because he's he's leading his opponent into the corner, leading them into his punching range, and he already knows he can hurt him. So that strat strategically speaking, that's maybe not the worst thing to do in that instance. You know, and he is boxing a little bit. Uh, yeah. And he high guard. Hippolito slowing down a little bit as well. He's not quite as aggressive as he was in the first round. Right. Both fighters trade jabs. Uh, Hippolito's did land and uh, throws an overhand right. That did not. John shakes his head. Come on, he says. This is this is turning into a good little good little fight here. It really is. And good body shot by John. men are deciding to fight inside forehead to forehead well let me ask you this Edgar if this does go the distance that first round it looked like Hippolito was in control of the first half of the round right that knockdown certainly turned the tie I don't think you can make any argument whatsoever that Hippolito won the round because of the knockdown but is there a possibility that it's a 10-9 round instead of a 10-8 round it could possibly be that, right? It just depends on, on, on the judges and how they how they felt, you know, how, how they seen the round. It's uh, a tough call. I generally think that if there's a knockdown and the fighter is legitimately hurt, it's a 10-8 round, period. Right, right. If it's a flash knockdown and one fighter's in control and maybe if he gets up, you know, off balance, that type of knockdown, then maybe it's 10-9, but... So how would you score that last one? I mean, I would have scored a 10-8. He was yeah. visibly yeah. hurt. Yeah. But I could see a judge making an argument for a 10-9 round. Not everybody operates on that philosophy that, you know, a knockdown alone uh, makes, it a, makes it a 10-8, you know. Hey, he believed those put good impressions. Nice. Well, if either fighter had ring rust coming into the fight, they certainly shook off a lot of it now because yeah, this has been an action fight. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, after the, the first 30 seconds. Good double left hook by John. Hey, a good body shot by him. Close to the second round. That was, and I, I think you can make a very strong argument that Hippolito won that round, yes. which is who would have thought that when we saw him struggle to get up and kind of stumble into his corner. I, I really didn't think he was going to come out that right. second round as aggressive as he did. No, I didn't either. I, I thought that when the round started, you mentioned that it looked like he had his legs under him. I thought he would he would certainly be there to fight, but I did not expect him to uh, come out, uh, like you said, as aggressively as, as yeah, he, he did. He went right, right, right at him. And, you know, I, I think that, that could be a, a good thing, you know, when you, when you get caught, but it could also be a bad thing. Well, and that's one of the things, too. Uh, we talked about how a fighter could dig himself into a hole if he scores an early knockdown in a four-round fight. But in the reverse, one of the things that I have seen happen, not as often, but does happen, is a fighter scores an early knockdown, feels like he's got the fight in his pocket, and he stops fighting the way that got him to that knockdown. He stops doing the things that got him the knockdown. He starts, you know, okay, I lost round two, but that's okay. I've already got that first round and that knockdown in my pocket. And next thing you know, you got a four-round decision to the guy who got dropped in the first round. Yeah, and, and that could be possible we see, but, but John is, is, is still game. And he is catching Hippolito with that jab. And he's boxing very effectively. And that's one of the things I will say is we talked about Herrera in his uh, in his career before you know before this comeback, uh, and he was a defensive fighter. He he was a counter puncher and he was a defensive fighter. And here, he's definitely more uh, taking charge more, and he's punching with a jab, good right hand there. And all of those he's boxing he's boxing pretty. And a lot of those shots didn't land. But that's one of the things with Herrera is when he fought down to his opponent's level. One of the things he did is he just didn't have a, a, enough punch output. Yeah, yeah. And some of these shots are not landing. The jab is, 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 I think, moderately effective, but it's not, he's not, you know, it's not a Larry Holmes jab right now. No, but it is but keeping him at bay, and it is, exactly. it is making it look like, hey, you know what, 
I am in control. As of right now, he's, it, you know, he is back is against the ropes, but once he gets that separation and he starts to box, he does look good. And that's that's a very good point because he's the jab may not be a, a snapping jab. It may not be snapping the head back of Alex Hippolito, but it's keep, like you said, it's keeping him at bay, and he's keeping active. He's not getting outworked in this round. Exactly, and, he, and, he, and he's done it a couple times. He, he's, he's setting up the loop in right hand when look here it comes, and it, it's. He, he, he throws it straight, but he's also looping that right hand off those double jabs. Well, I've got to say, you know, we talked oh, nice, nice jab. left hand there. Good combination for, yes. for Smiley Herrera. Well, Alex Hippolito, you know, certainly a tough guy. And he's, he's still moving forward, but I've got to say that... Uh, if I were in, if I were his cornerman and I had been training, preparing for this fight, and there's no shortage of tapes of John Herrera available, I would not have been preparing him for this particular fight. This no. is not what I would have expected, and I would be a, a little bit a uh, little bit surprised if I were his cornerman because I would have probably been telling him, okay, this is a guy. He's not very active. You can outwork him. He's going to try and counterpunch you. I wouldn't have prepared him for a guy who is boxing and jabbing as effectively as Herrera is. Oh, good shot. Good right hand for Hippolito, but a good exchange for both fighters. And there looks like, I can't tell, but there might be a, a slight cut over the right eye or left eye of Hippolito. I can't tell right now. We'll have to take a look for that in the corner. Hippolito in the corner. Wow. Let's, take a li let's take a listen to the blue corner. to round four, Alex Hippolito versus John Smiley Herrera. And I really think Hippolito needs to really put pedal to the metal in this round and, and get, go for broke because he, I think he's behind on the, on the scorecard. What? Well, Herrera's a very cagey fighter, hard to crack that, that defense, but as we saw in his last fight against Gene Perez, when he's aggressive, he can leave himself open for those shots. And, and Smiley Herrera is aggressive in this fight. This is not a, a typical performance that we've seen from him in the past. And he's fighting very effectively, very aggressively. And the one opportunity, the one drawback with, with his performance here, if you can call it that, is that he is going to leave himself a little bit more open than he had when he was fighting more defensively, when he was the counterpuncher. Yes, yes. But you know what? I, I spoke with him yesterday, and I said, hey, John, I said, you know, are you going to throw more punches tomorrow? And he said, I've been working on throwing more punches. I didn't, I didn't expect to see him fight and, 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 and really box the way he's doing. I, I, I really expected him just to shell up and kind of walk and, and try to uh, tire down uh, Hippolito. But he's, he's landing shot. And a couple of right hands landed upstairs. He, landed. Upstairs oh. on Hippolito, but he fired back with a couple of hard right hands of his own. Well, you know, this is interesting because I, one of the questions I'd like to ask him after this fight is, is this fight, is this performance a direct response to his uh, fight with Gene Perez? Because it seems like he's fighting with a, with a fire that we haven't seen in all of his previous professional fights. I, I, I would have to ask him that, yeah, because that, that is a good point. Well, this is the John that I, I, I want to see right here, you know? Right. 
Well, again, I said it uh, at the beginning of the broadcast. When you fought John in your professional debut, I remember afterwards thinking both these guys are going places. Both of these fighters have got a bright future. I didn't expect to, to be here, to be here all you know all these years later, right. covering a uh, John Hadera fight where his record is four and eighteen. And, and then also on top of that, being impressed with what I'm seeing. But I mean, this is the kind of John Herrera that we've been wanting to see probably his whole career. Yes, yes. Um, you know what? Better late than never. Exactly, yeah. And he believed, though, you know, the credit to him, he's still fighting. Um, but just needs a little bit more. Well, and again, you know, it's, it's a question. It's a, it's a valid point that... Nicolito came out strong. You know what? He might have actually even won that round just based on that <laughs> that, that last exchange. But, wow. you know, Hippolito, it's, we talked about it earlier, and we talked about it with the Gene Perez fight. Sometimes in a four-rounder, you get yourself in a hole, and it completely takes you out of your game because you know you have to dig out of that hole. Right, right. You, don't have, you don't have a flash knockdown. I mean, it, it, you can't have a flash knockdown in a four-round fight. No. You've got to do everything perfectly in those four rounds. And when Hippolito got dropped in that first round, it may have taken him out of his game a little bit. I, I think it did. I think it did. I don't, I don't think he expected to get dropped by, by, by John Herrera. Uh, John Herrera doesn't have uh, to his record, doesn't have that many knockouts. So, uh, Promoter Isidro Castillo just came and asked yeah. us what we thought of the fight, yeah. and we both gave him a thumbs, <laughs> thumbs up. up. That was a heck yeah. of a fight. This, this, was a, this was a really good fight. Hegler. But with that being said, I mean, if you, if that's the case, if I had him winning the second round, and I, I, I thought the fourth round could go either way, if let's say you give him the fourth round, we're, we're talking about a one-point fight. And then we get into that question we talked about earlier. Do you give him a 10-8 round or a 10-9 round? Then how do you score? Like where? Exactly. You, yeah. You could be looking at a, at a, you know, a, a lot closer fight than, than it, we really think. In that situation, it'd be a draw. Yeah. But let's hear the official scorecard here. There's your draw. There's our draw. John Herrera with the well-deserved win. Again, you the S Judge Esther Lopez had the fight 38-38. What's telling about that is she had it round one, a 10-9 round, not a 10-8 round, but a 10-9 round. She felt that uh, that Hippolito did so well in that round that despite the flash knockdown, it would only be a one-point round. Here's the other interesting thing. Mark Sanchez apparently thought the same thing. He had it a shutout. Judge Mark Sanchez right. had a shutout for John Herrera. And it was 40-36, so he scored the first round 10-9 as well. Closing words from John Smiley Herrera. Well deserved majority decision win. 40 to 36 from Judge Mark Sanchez. 39 36 from Judge Anthony Romero. And Esther Lopez scored the fight 38 38. Again, we talked about that. If you took that first round and scored it a 10 9 round, round two and round four were close enough that you can certainly make an argument that Hippolito pulled it off, those two rounds off, and then you got a draw. With that being said, I've covered, you know, Herrera. We've talked about this before. I've covered Herrera's fight, fights for much of his career. And I've got to say, that's that, you know, and I even covered one of his wins. And that's probably the best I've seen him look. And it's amazing to think that after a four-year layoff, 
yeah. after 22 fights, after 18 losses, that the best is yet to come from John Hedera. Hey, you, you, I guess you can teach an old dog new tricks. Exactly. Well, I hope we see him again soon because that was a great performance. I, I, I'm, I'm very confident that we are going to see him again. And I hope we see Alex Hippolito again because he yeah, is a tough game fighter and, you know, he's got nothing to hang his head over. No, he, he, did, he did really well as well. Um, he, he threw really well combinations, just got caught. Um, and, and didn't, the work rate wasn't there, but uh, he'll go back to the drawing boards and, and hopefully get to see him again. Well, we're already getting to our next fight, and that is Anthony Hill from Arizona as he takes on Johnny Soto from Mission, Texas. And Anthony Hill's coming up to the ring now. This is our one of our 45 veterans here. Well, again, I pulled him up on box rec. They're showing him as a 30 fight veteran. They may be including his bare knuckle fights or his uh, MMA fights, I should say. Uh, I gotcha, I gotcha. But uh, on box rec, again, his his record is shown in as one in 29. And I must say, uh, It'd be easy to say, you know, at 1 and 29, hey, this guy shouldn't be fighting, but my goodness, this guy is one tough guy. Yeah, no, he, he definitely is. I just pulled up his record here. I've got all the fighters' records. Uh, as a professional boxer, like I said, uh, 1 and 29. Of those 29 losses, only four by knockout. And we're going to go over some of his opponents through the course of this I, which I'm, I, I'm pretty safe. I, I, I feel pretty confident saying this. This four-round fight we're about to watch. Yeah. We're gonna watch a four-round fight, and we'll <laughs> talk about some of Anthony Hill's other fights. But man, well, here comes here comes Johnny Soto. I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of hurt not to see the cowboy hat. He came out to the <laughs> cowboy hat last time. Hey man, uh, that that is a that is a staple of him. I, I really wanted to see him with his cowboy hat. Uh, I like this kid. I watched him fight. A couple months ago, he, he did amazing. Um, I like his swagger, uh, and like I said, his cowboy hat swagger in, in, in shorts. Really, 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 uh, really, really good young man. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm excited to see him. Well, Anthony Hill's last fight, I, I've covered several of his fights. His last fight was back in on October 16th, and I was ringside for that fight up at the Kiva Auditorium in Albuquerque where he took on Jordan Gregory. And I've, I've covered a lot of Jordan Gregory's fights. And I kind of jokingly said that Jordan Gregory is the best 0-3 and 2 fighter in America. <laughs> I mean, really, this guy could easily have been 5-0 and based on, you look at his fights. Right, right. And Tough kid. Tough kid. And Anthony Hill went the distance with him, lost the decision. I'm sure a lot of people who just read my fight report on fightnews.com probably said, well, you know, 0-3, 0-3 and 2 versus 1-28. I mean, why should I care about that fight? Well, Anthony Hill is a guy who will show you things you haven't seen before. Jordan Gregory is a guy who I can't think of a better fighter to a, a more deserving fighter to get get a win because he really was a, a, a very good fighter who got the got the short end of some real close decisions. I'm expecting here that Johnny Soto is gonna he's gonna learn a little bit tonight in this fight. He's you know I anticipate he's gonna go four rounds and he's gonna see some things he's never saw before. And, and I think you're right. I think you're right. Hill is Hill is tough and he's been tested. He's been, he's been, in, he's been in those deeper waters. So uh, definitely gonna be gonna be a good fight for Soto. Yeah, Johnny Soto, one and one with one KO. His last fight, he scored a first round TKO over Larry Sanchez Jr. in a fight that you were ringside for. Before that, he lost a four round decision to Diego Martinez, Diego Romero Martinez, a fighter who's a good prospect in his own right at 2 0 right now. And, you know, one of those judges had that fight within one point. He had a fight 39 38. So, I mean, he held his own with a good young prospect. Absolutely. And Anthony Hill uh, caught Soto with a nice right hand. I did not expect that uh, to start off this round, but Anthony Hill uh, doing pretty, holding his own. But I will say that Anthony Hill's left hook is uh, a little bit telegraphed. There's no other way to put it, but. 
Soto, a little wild with that right hand, uh, did not hit the mark. Well, we talked about, you know, Smiley being a defensive fighter, and, and that's very much Anthony Hill. He, uh, he, he doesn't run, but he, it's hard to hit him clean. Yeah. And we're seeing that here today as he fights Johnny Soto. Again, Johnny Soto from Mission, Texas. And Soto's, Soto's taking his time. It doesn't look like he, he's, he's getting too... Well, Soto did walk into a shot from, from Anthony Hill at the, in the first 30 seconds, and that might have woke him up and said, you know what? Let, uh, me, let me readjust. Yeah, let me, don't do anything stupid. This guy may have a one in 29 record. I don't need to, I don't need to make this a, a tougher fight than I, than I need to. He's boxing very well, but Anthony Hill, like I said, veteran tricks there. That, that left jab from Hill as Soto was backing up barely landed, but it landed. Good left hook by Soto. It's yeah, he, caught, he did catch Hill there. And Hill looks hurt. Right hand hurts Anthony Hill. And Soto going to the body still. I like that. Well, I may have jinxed this uh, <laughs> by saying that this fight is definitely going to go four rounds because Soto may have overheard me and said, you know what, I'm going to make, make that commentator read, read his words because he's coming out aggressively. But he's got to be careful. He's got to be careful because he is backing up with his hands down, and he is slipping the shot, but one of those shots could catch you, and, and it, could, it, could, it could end your night. One thing I'd like to see more from Soto is maybe setting up his punches, which is hard to do against a fighter like Anthony. Hill because Anthony Hill like if you start jabbing your way in he'll just step back he'll just force you to reset yeah and and, and Hill is in switching stances as well he, he's, he's an awkward fighter the other thing I noticed from Hill when I was sitting ringside in uh, at the Kiva Auditorium last month was that he's a he's an epic trash talker he was talking some trash to <laughs> Jordan Gregory during the fight and who knows if he's doing it gonna do it tonight hey you know what it, Whatever, whatever it can get you uh, that advantage in the ring, you, you've got to do. And, and I don't mind that at some times, you know? Right. Good round. Well, that was a better round than I expected. I think Anthony Hill certainly showed some of those veteran tricks for, uh, for to Johnny Soto. Johnny Soto is, is getting his education from the professor here, but it's the right kind of education for a young up-and-coming fighter because I still think Johnny Soto won that round. It's, it's the kind of thing where he's going to take away from this fight. You know what? Hey, that first round, I came in a little little too loosey-goosey. I came in, I took a took a shot from this, this fighter. Next time I fight a higher-level guy, don't make that mistake. And yeah, that shot could may in your night, you know. Right. Greg, Greg, or he, Hill not, didn't hurt him, but, but a higher opposition fighter could, could, could catch you and, and drop you. Right. So you don't want to take those shots that early. Uh, Soto did good, though. And I think he won the round. I think Anthony Hill's legs might be a little, a little bit wobbly right now. There's this might be a good attack. opportunity for Soto, and I, I, I agree. I think a, a good body attack from Soto could really, uh, really pay dividends here in this four-round fight. Well, again, that veteran bag of tricks. Uh, Anthony Hill was a little bit hurt there, and it looks like he dug into that bag of tricks and, and found an exit. Well, I asked you this in the previous fight. What would you have said to Johnny Soto in between rounds? You know what? I, I would have just said, you know what? Take your time. Take your time with him. He's, he's, he's not going to let you rush in. Don't rush in. Take your time. Go behind your jab. Use your speed. Use your boxing. He, th this kid is a, th this kid can box. This kid can box. Uh, not a power puncher. Put your punches together. Put your punches together. Well, I'll say against Jordan Gregory, I don't think that Anthony Hill was hurt at all. And against uh, Johnny Soto, I think he got hurt. And there's a little trash talk there. there. We talked about it. <laughs> I don't know what he said, but it probably was uh, something to the effect of uh, you don't hit very, very hard. <laughs> that was probably the toned down version. Yeah, just, of it. just a tad bit, huh? Yeah. The PG version. Yeah. <laughs>
one thing I'm curious about, it seems like Anthony Hill, he throws that jab and he leans over. It seems like he's setting himself for a potential overhand right, count, a counter overhand right by doing that. With a, with a veteran of 30 professional boxing matches, though, you know, you think that, that would be a mistake that you wouldn't expect from a fighter with uh, that much experience. Yeah, good, good jab there by Hill. And you know, maybe maybe he's, he's waiting for him to, to throw that right hand to roll with, because he is throwing a lot of right, uh, right uppers. But. In this round, we've seen a lot more jabs from Johnny Soto. Hills has Johnny Soto on the ropes. Hills not the fastest fighter, but he's just smothering it. And for, just... for a young fighter, that that could get frustrating. And I can see how Anthony Hill would be a frustrating fighter for anybody. I mean, yeah. you can't do anything against Anthony Hill. He's got an answer for it. Right, and he had a little trash talk in there at the end right. of the round. <laughs> <laughs> Good round again, but uh, I still think uh, Soto, Soto has that round out. I think so as well. Again, this is the kind of fight that, you know, a lot of guys watching this on the Athlete and Me TV on Facebook.com slash Athlete and Me TV might be asking themselves, you know, why am I watching a fight with a 1 in 29 guy? Well, this is the kind of fight where a young fighter, first of all, you can see Anthony Hill's a cagey guy. You can see how he went the distance with 25 of his 29 uh, opponents where, where he lost. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a cagey guy, and he's showing Soto some things he hasn't seen before. If you're a young fighter, this is the kind of fight you want. You may you may think you want nothing but first-round knockouts, but you really need fights like this yeah, to get need, to that next you level. These, you need these fights, yeah, absolutely. You need these fights where you're going to be tested. Uh, you know, in these fights, oh, he, Soto's supposed to win. Yeah, we know that. But it, is, he, is he learning from these fights that he's supposed to win? Exactly. And Anthony Hill has shown him some things. He's had to adjust his game plan a little bit yep. in this fight. You don't get that when you get the guy who put on his boxing gloves for the first time in his life 30 minutes before the fight. You get that from fighting a cagey guy like this, and, and he's, he's had to adjust his game at times. That's part of the learning process. And I really like what Soto's doing here. You know, he's, he's aggressive. He's cracked that that he's cracked that puzzle a few times which is something that very few people can do against him you see right there he, he put his punches together and, and on those those that's what he needs to do put your punches together He's one shot at a time well again reading anthony hill's resume it's like a who's who of southwest boxing prospects last fight jordan gregory uh, again, he came into that fight with an 0-3 and 2 record. That was probably the best 0-3 and 2 fighter in America. For that, he fought an undefeated Clinton Chavez, lost the four-round decision. For that, fought an undefeated Gabriel Galvadon, lost the four-round decision. Before that, fought Jose Luis Sanchez at seven and one, lost the six-round decision. Before that, uh, a decision loss to Jesus uh, Tavera, a 15-fight veteran with a nine and six record. I mean, he's just. He's fought pretty much everybody, and he goes the rounds. So there's a reason why Anthony Hill is still fighting, and, and people are still calling him, and his his phone is still still getting calls from promoters looking looking for rounds for their young fighters. Yeah, because of, of fights like this. I mean, he, he he's he's making Soto work. He's making him earn his paycheck tonight. And it's amazing too because. His first fight was back in June of 2014 against Terry Butterbaugh, and he won a majority decision over Terry Butterbaugh, a fighter with a 10-9 and 10-9 uh, and three record. Started off his career one and zero. Since then, he's lost 29 in a row. But man, I mean, you know, he he really gives a good fight, a good performance of it. And there's, and there's a little more trash talking as he yep. as he hits him to the body. And Soto has been going to the body effectively, and uh, I think that body shot hurt uh, Hill a little bit, so he had to give it a little commentary of his own. Yeah. And another nice left hook to the body. Good uppercut from Soto. You know, he's cracking through that tricky defense of Anthony Hill every now and then. Yes, he is. Good, good uppercuts there on the rope. Yeah. 
Well, if, you wanna, if you're wondering when's the last time Anthony Hill's been stopped, it was back in 2016 when Craig Callahan, a 12 and, who at the time had a record of 12 and one, scored a third round TKO over Anthony Hill. So if you're curious if, if there's a possibility that, that uh, we might see a, a, a knockout, well, it hasn't happened in a while, but Soto is certainly fighting a good fight. Right now, I think that was another Soto round. I think, it's, I think so, too. It's 3-0 three, three Soto. Um, but not, not, easy. Not, a, not an easy three. Not an easy shutout. It's funny because that last fight I covered, David Rios, who's the referee in this fight, was also the referee in Anthony Hill's last fight against uh, Jordan Gregory. So he's got uh, he, he's, he's seen him in action up close several times. Yeah. Good referee. Very good referee, yes. About to start round four, the final round. Johnny Soto versus Anthony Hill. Johnny Soto, one and one. Anthony Hill, one and 29. And if you're just tuning in on the Athlete and Me TV, don't hold that don't hold that record against Anthony Hill. He's a cagey guy and he's showing it in this fight. But Johnny Soto, we have it a shutout so far. Anthony Hill pushes him to the ropes, but Johnny Soto gets some pretty good body shots in there. He's Anthony, making him work for it, everything he's getting right there. He really is, and Anthony Hill had his guard pretty high up there. I, a little bit of a slow telegraph <laughs> right hand there. That was that probably was not That was not the fastest punch we saw tonight. But. See, see, this is kind of the, the what I expected to see from John Herrera in our previous fight, you know, the hands up coming up. Right. But, you know, it, it, you see. Good work here by Soto. One thing I did like is Soto threw that uppercut because Anthony Hill had been leaning in, and I remember I was about to comment on that. Hey, he's you know he's, he might be time to incorporate that uppercut. Now the uppercut didn't land, but I'm glad he threw that punch because it showed that he's he's adapting to what Anthony Hill's doing. Anthony Hill was leaning into him as he was in the corner, opening himself up for the uppercut. It came up short, but it shows Johnny Soto is 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 processing this information as the fight goes along and yes. adapting accordingly, which is what you want to see in a young fighter. Absolutely. That uppercut, that uppercut is, is landing. If he, if he puts that left hook behind it, right there where he's at, boom. And he just threw it again right there. And he, he can land that. Well, good welterweight fight. Johnny Soto weighed in at 148. Oh, good left hook by Soto. Anthony Hill, 155 points. Quite a bit, but a little, little, maybe a little fatigue coming in. And another thing you want a young fighter to experience is, is how to properly pace himself. What it feels like to be in the fourth round for the first time. Because if you're a good fighter, it's not going to be four rounders for very long. It's only going to get the fights are only going to get longer as you, as you progress. Absolutely, and, it, and it's good that that Soto had Hill in front of him this whole time because as a young fighter, that's developing that. that to see a fighter get pushed back like that. You exactly. know? And, and he has not the, not the younger fighter pushing the, the, more, the more experienced fighter. Back. So, uh, good, good showing by Soto. I think he won uh, a shutout. But nonetheless, Hill did great. I think so, too. And Hill's, my, my score, unofficial scorecard will show Hill dropping to 1 in 30. But again, like we said with Rubik Alba earlier, I think Anthony Hill's phone is going to be ringing tomorrow. He's probably going to, there's there's plenty of fight cards in, a, in, in America, and there's plenty of young prospects who, needs a, who need a, a four-round fight and need to be tested, you know, in a, a young welterweights and young uh, junior middleweights that Anthony Anthony Hill can, can test and, and give them the, those opportunities. Because if, you, if you're a promoter and you, you need a four-rounder for a welterweight prospect who's 1-0, 2-0, 3-0, Anthony Hill's your man. He's probably right. certainly going to give your guy four rounds of action. I agree. I agree. So good, good contest, uh, nonetheless, and, and hopefully we see both of these guys against him. Well, that's a good win for Soto. He, unofficially, of course, we have to hear the official scorecards, and but I'm assuming he'll go to two and one, and uh, I think a, this is a pretty significant win for him, a good win for him.
from us here in Hobbs, New Mexico. We're here at the Corral Arena. You know what, I'm, li I'm liking that he's taking his time in, in the walkout, you know. Uh, I like that. Enjoying too. that. Not rushing anything. Hopefully he fights that way. Well, he's 2-0 oh with, uh, with one knockout and I mean, he's a, he's a solid young prospect. And this should be a good opportunity for him. I don't know much about Josh Reyes either, but this is a clearly the kind of fight where he can really st uh, really make a statement here. For sure. I've said it before and I'll say it again, but you don't know if when you're watching a fighter at 2-0 or 3-0 if you're seeing a future world champion, but you can you can figure out if you're not seeing a future world champion. So one of the things Augustine Perez is going to want to do is make sure he makes a statement. Even if it turns out his opponent is not in the same class as he is, he wants to make a make a strong statement here. For sure. Now, I like Ray, Ray, Reyes does look in, in shape. Um, obviously physique doesn't mean, doesn't always translate Late that you that you can you can fight, but he does look in shape. So uh, we shall see. Again, Josh Reyes listed at one and one. I found one fighter on box rec with an 0-1 record. I don't know if it's the same fighter. Uh, that fighter fought in Idaho uh, in 2019, but uh, I can say right off the bat, I have found Augustin Perez's two professional fights, and uh, he's uh, he's looked good against the opposition he's, he's fought up to this point. I agree with you. I think Josh Reyes does. I mean, he looks to be pretty fit. And Southpaw, too. And that could certainly uh, that could certainly cause problems for a fighter who's not expecting to fight a southpaw. Good right hand for Augustine Perez. Well, Perez is uh, he's doing a pretty good job. He's not over he's not over aggressive. He's not walking into anything. Sizing up his opponent, and if he's never fought a southpaw before, this is a, a good opportunity for him to, to figure out that tricky style. Absolutely, because everything, all the, all the shots come backwards from, from what you're you're normally expect or you're, you're expecting. Well, there was a former WBO heavyweight champ named Michael Bent who knocked out Tommy Morrison uh, back in 1993, and in his professional debut, he was knocked out by a fighter named Jerry Jones, uh, who was a talented, a tough, gritty opponent in the 1980s and 1990s in, in the heavyweight division. But a lot of people were scratching their heads after Michael Bent knocked out Tommy Morrison. How did this guy lose that fight? Right. Well, when people asked about it, he said he had, I had no idea I was fighting a southpaw. My, my first fight and they put me in with a southpaw and I figured out I was fighting a southpaw after I got hit with that first punch and so it can really throw you out of your game especially if you're not expecting it yeah especially if you if you, if you grew you know you you're the majority of the fighters are conventional fighters right so right. they're, they're right-handed fighters and then you get that odd ball left-handed and everything's backwards so, exactly. yeah and if well, you've never fought one and then you get thrown out there the very first time <laughs> well we talked about it earlier your pro debut your are already fighting with those 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 butterflies in your stomach and then uh, to hit that brick wall you know if you get dropped early on as as Michael Bent did right. in that first round because he was fighting a southpaw when he didn't realize it uh, you can find yourself in quicksand you know you can find yourself like already in the hole and not knowing how to get get out of it mm -hmm. and and Michael Bent lost that fight by stoppage and uh, and and he learned an important lesson number one make sure you're not fighting a southpaw and if you are prepare for it uh, but so far, you know, I, I've got to say, Augustine Perez is fighting well. 
He's found a home with that right hand, and, uh, and Josh Reyes so far hasn't put up a ton of offense, but he's, he's, he's maybe just trying. him in the corner there he's talking to his corner man he looks he looks uh, pretty calm pretty confident I would say that right off the bat he uh, this is uh, his last fight ended in the first round he won his professional debut by uh, in a four-round decision over Ricardo Reyes won a, won a four round decision there and that was in Roswell New Mexico back in 2000 But they never seem to take advantage. Right off the bat, he uh, this is uh, his last fight ended in the first round. He won his professional debut by uh, in a four-round decision over Ricardo Reyes. Won a, won a, a four-round decision there, and that was in Roswell, New Mexico, back in 2000. Uh, in a four-round decision. But they never. Here's the fighter who hasn't fought off the bat. But they never. Uh, when a fighter gets hit with a low blow. Off the bat. Here's the fighter who hasn't. Here's the fighter. Here's the fighter who hasn't fought in three years. He's got a little bit of ring rust. He's shaking off as well. Seems it seems to be quite a bit. Oh, there's a low blow. Oh, oh wow. Well, that, that's one way to take some steam off of the fighter. It is, and one of the interesting things when a fighter gets hit with a low blow is sometimes it's in their best interest to try and milk that five minutes, but they never seem to take advantage of that. Well, you, you, I mean, you, you can't, right? Because the fighter, you know, already got hit low. And, you know, right. I'm, I'm over here leaning, and all the fans are here watching, and then they start booing. You know what? But no, no, no. no fighter ever really does, do they? They don't, except <laughs> for John Ruiz. Art Hopkins being booed or, or anything. He did. Exactly. He, he fought his own fight, but... <laughs> But yeah, when it comes to the low blows, I've seen fighters who are clearly winded. They seem like they're handed a gift by a low blow that they've got up to five minutes to recover from. And they feel like the, the, the need to get back in there right away. And, it, and you're thinking like if you're his cornerman, you're like, no, take your time. Don't jump back in there. You've got five minutes. Take it, lay correct, down. Correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't the time supposed to stop when you, when you get hurt or does the time continue to? It does to, stop. The clock stops. So, and... Most most states, their rules basically say you have up to five minutes to recover. After that, you know that. Recovery from recover from that low blow. Augustine's just recovered from, from, from the air, so right. He, he's coming forward now. Well, one thing I I, I would probably like to, uh, his cornerman will probably work with him on after the fight is sometimes he does seem to
still, but he's still pounding at his body. Right. right. You know, over, over time, that 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 does take take its toll at right. all. Your quarterman might and that's clearly Pettis tonight. Right. And they're getting a the hold. And you can see, you can see uh, Reyes' face. It, you know, he, he just—he looks like he's hurt. When he's holding, he's grimacing and, you know, see it in his face. Well, I remember a, a little bit of a throwback fight here, but years ago there was a talented Olympian named Tyrell Biggs, and he fought, oh, wow, we got he's down again. He's complaining of a low blow. Well, he's up at six, but he looks like he's, I don't think it's going to take a whole lot more if. Telling that his that he's still hurt. And Augustine coming back, firing to the body still. I like that. But as I was saying about Tyrell Biggs, when he fought Mike Tyson, as he said, you know, if your legs are gone, then just trade with him. Now normally that'd be crazy advice if you're fighting Mike Tyson, right? right. And a trade. Lou Duva knew something there. Well, another round for Pettis. Well, I would. I. It's a tough. That's a tough sell for a young fighter uh, and a quarterman to tell his young fighter when he's he's not winning these exchanges mm -hmm. to say, you know what. If your legs are gone, if you're not doing, if you're not able to outbox him, then trade with this guy. You know, you're not the guy taking the punches when you're in the corner. Right. But I think that right now Josh Reyes is best option because yeah. he can land those punches. We saw it at the end of that last round, at the end of the third round. He caught him with some shots. Now, if he trades with him, he's going to take some big shots. But that's probably his best bet. It looks like the like the referee is in, in Reyes's corner and stopping the fight. Reyes' body language did not indicate he wanted to continue no, no, from, for much of that uh, that last third round, and uh, I think he, he he was complaining about the low blow, but it was just that constant pressure that, that he was receiving. You know, good 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 work by Perez. He he came out and fought fought hard. Older Nate, so he needs to, to to step it up. Try to get as many fights in as he possibly can. Yeah, no more three-year layoffs for, for <laughs> Augustine <laughs> Yeah, you can. Well, uh, I've, I've covered some mini flyweight fights. Yeah. And uh, you know, I've covered a mini uh, WBO mini flyweight championship fight in Japan one year, and those two guys came in right at the 105-pound limit, and they clearly were making had struggled to make weight right. to get there. Yeah. I can't imagine somebody walking <laughs> around at uh, at 100 pounds with some change. 
and, and he's, that, that's probably after he's eaten soaking wet, you know, right. 100 pounds. So, well, if you're if you're that far under the weight, the contracted weight, he probably was fully dressed for all we know. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he probably yeah. probably had his uh probably had his uh winter coat on and everything <laughs> else. A couple a couple rolls of quarters exactly. in his pocket. <laughs> Let me make sure I make the 100 pounds. Right. <laughs> We're watching Kenneth. Kenneth Jamerson walk to the ring here. He is, as mentioned, the 100 pounds, 100.8. I, 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 let's not shortchange okay, it. 100.8. Okay. Uh, 100.8 pound opponent of Abraham Perez, who came in weighing just uh, under uh, or just over one, 112 pounds. So I mean, Abraham Perez is coming in with an 11.2 pound weight advantage. Yeah, but then a Abraham. see and, and hopefully he learned something from this fight and uh, you know his last fight against uh, Matthew Melton I, I, I covered and As I was saying, I covered his last fight in Albuquerque. He fought a, a guy named Matthew Melton, and Matthew Melton, I remember he stopped him uh, in the corner in the first round as the corner stopped the fight. Matthew Melton was making his pro debut, and he was not not the toughest opponent for uh, such an accomplished amateur, right. but I, you got to also recognize that it's hard to match a fighter at the 112, 114 pounds. Matthew Melton, much like Kenneth Jamerson, though, came in weighing 100. Honest, he looks pretty full for 100.8 pounds. I mean, he's a tall guy. He's, in fact, it looks like he's taller than Abraham Perez, which is not what I expected when I heard that he was outweighed by 12 pounds at this at this weight class. Well, he's Jamerson's uh, trying to trying to box here. He's uh, got a high guard, and uh, so far, Abraham Perez is not getting reckless. I think he's taking advantage of this opportunity to, to work on a few things, and oh. Jamerson went down from a left hand to the, to the head. Uh, I don't know exactly what the injury was, but... Wow. Well, Jamerson's not giving a lot of body language that he wants this fight to continue. Referee... I think referee David Rios uh, did a very good job there, though, because... If a fighter is not going to want to to continue, then you make him say, "I quit." Don't don't get don't just wave it off just because he's giving you that body language. Absolutely. Because how many times have we seen in a fight where a fighter did that? The referee jumps the gun, waves the fight off, and then the guy complains and says, "Hey, why'd you stop the fight?" Yeah. If a fighter does want to quit quit in the fight or does does want to doesn't want to continue, then then you know that's that's his, his decision to make. But don't try and have him pass that on to you. And another shot drops Jamerson down to a knee, and he really doesn't have an answer for the power for Abraham Perez. No. I think this is over. I think so too. Well, good good win for Perez. Um, a fight that, that we knew he would win. Um, it is hard to, to find fighters at his weight, but you know he did he did well. Well, and the funny thing is, when I saw this fight on paper, I thought it it very well could be a mismatch. But there was one wild card on that, and that was promoter Isidro Castillo. Usually has a pretty a pretty good ability to to weed out some these these diamonds in the rough, these guys who may have an 0 2 in record and surprise you. Uh, but again, you know, I realize how tough it is to find an opponent at 112 pounds. Uh, this was this was not the diamond in the rough. Jamerson, uh, you know, all credit to him. He, he took this fight, came down for Michigan for this fight, but Abraham Perez is just an elite prospect. I mean, I think he's an elite, world-class fighter. 
and I think we're going to be seeing a lot of him in the future. He may be New Mexico's next world champ. I, I, I completely agree. I, I could see that. He's, I mean, he's, he's been decorated as an amateur and now jumping into the pros. Um, they have him on the fast track, it looks like, of, of getting him quite a bit of fight. So, right. Um, I like what I see, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this young man develop and, and hopefully becoming a world champ one day. And I, I agree. You know, like I said, Jamerson wasn't a, the world's toughest opponent, uh, but, you know, it was hard to find those matches. And really, to be honest, at this stage of his career, you know, you don't, you hate to see it when a fighter gets to 8-0 and they, their, their career starts to stumble a little bit because they right. can't get fights right. and it's hard for them to get fights. I'm glad he's getting these opportunities. And really, you know, this is a, this is a great fight uh, for him right. because it gives him, you know, it gives him a chance to stay active, keep active. Let's not forget that, you know, a lot of great fighters, that's how they started their career. I mean, you'd be hard-pressed to name any of Canelo's first 20, right. 20 opponents. But right, but that, that's where he learned and he, and he developed as, as as one of the greater fighters that he is now. So, exactly. uh, good win for Pettis. Uh, you know, he, he did what he was supposed to do. He did. Look forward to seeing the hammer work harder in the future, huh? I am too. I'm really excited about the uh, as his career develops. And I'm really, uh, I'm really thinking we're going to see some great things from him in the future. Again, Abraham Perez improves to 2-0 with two knockouts. And Kenneth Jamerson drops to 0-3 with three knockout losses. I'm looking at his record, though, you know, his pro debut, he fought uh, Andy Dominguez Velasquez, who's 1-0, made it to the second round in that fight. So on paper, you know, he was a guy who had some experience uh, as a professional. He was scheduled, actually, to fight in six days against a fighter named Contavious Slay. Uh, in Houston, Texas, so I'm assuming that fight's going to be off. I'm thinking he's probably going to be suspended uh, based off his knockout oh. loss here, but right. but uh, it's, it's you know, I, maybe I was a little too hard on uh, Abraham, and, or not Abraham, but uh, uh, on uh, Kenneth Chamberson. Uh, you know, he was fighting an elite fighter, yeah. and, you know, he... Uh, he came to fight. I mean, he did come to fight when things went, went you know, when things went badly. Uh, he wasn't able to continue, but, I mean, when you're fighting an elite fighter, you know, that, that can happen. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, the, and, and the jitters, too. You right. know, and, uh, you know coming, coming from, from that far, from cro clear across the country, you know, <laughs> coming exactly. down here to fight and, you know, someone else's home, not hometown, but home state, right. and, and then an elite fighter at that, you know, so... He, well, he did good. Well, those of uh, those of you who are watching on Athlete and Me TV, you remember that last fight we covered, and Edgar, you weren't you weren't there for it, but it was uh, it was Derek Perez as he fought uh, fought Dwayne Bonds. Okay. And Derek Perez came into that fight with a with a two and eight uh, two and eight record. No, it was actually I think it was worse than that. It was, it was two and eighteen, I believe. But he he came in to win. He came in swinging for the fences and walked into a, a big right hand and, and got knocked out. So sometimes you know a fighter can can you know I hate to put it this way, but they can believe too much of themselves yeah. in, in that situation. Yeah. So you know he 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 uh, that was a pretty ugly knockout. Uh, Kenneth Jamerson. He had a strategy coming out. I did see him throwing some 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 punches early on. I do think he realized pretty early on that he was fighting an elite fighter, and uh, 
But I think this is going to be an exciting, exciting fight as we uh, progress and watch Abraham Perez's career develop. I think it's going to be exciting for us to say, hey, we were there when. Yeah, yeah. We saw this, this kid when he fought in his second fight here in Hobbs, New Mexico. Absolutely. Because this, this is a kid that you're, you're eventually going to see on television, you know, becoming right. a world champion. Um, you know, it, we're, we're excited to see him. I'm, I'm very excited to see, see his development uh, here in the, in the next couple of years. Um, I am too, and I bet there's people here in the audience right now who in about three or four years are going to be channel surfing. They're going to turn on ESPN, and they're going to see this young fighter, and they say, I remember that guy. He yeah. fought in Hobbs. He fought in Hobbs. Well, now, moving into our next fight, we've got we've got, we've got got a barn burner. This, this, could, be, this could be our, our, uh, our uh, fight of the night. This uh, we've got be. Herman Rendon versus uh, your Hyman Reza. Wow. Well, this is the fight we've been really excited yeah. about. And it's a testament to the matchmaking of Isidro Castillo. I mean, because it's such a well-matched fight. Herman Rondon came out of nowhere to beat James Land in his last fight. Your Highness Rizak is just a an exciting fighter. You can hear the crowd erupt for him. Yeah. This, this, this young kid, he, he's, he's gone through so much in his life. Uh, you know, growing up, uh, find, finding his mom, you know, killing herself by suicide. And, and, and you know, him... him Continuing to develop as a young man, a uh, respectable young man every time you see him, uh, very humble. I, I, I love this kid. I, I love this kid. I, I think he's got all the talent in the world, um, but the only knock that I have is, he, is he's never in shape. So I really, really hope that he he, he is he, he's worked on, on, on getting in shape and he because um, he's got a tough fight tonight. You know, yes, and Rezak really looks like the complete package. Yes. You know, but then again, Rendon, you know, in, in his last fight, J James Land, you know, paid, brought him in, picked him in to bring him to this fight and then gets beat. You know, Rendon beats him and then, you know, comes out and says, I, I'll take on any of the hard knock promotion fighters at this weight. I, I'm the best. So big words from Rendon. Let's see if he can, he, he can, he can capitalize that against your hand. Good little shearing section for Rendon as well. section for your highness. Herman Rendon has brought a few fans out himself. Well, you talked about conditioning in this fight, and your Highness Rezak, his last fight, even he will admit, I was not in shape for that fight. Right. But in his defense, he took that fight on, what, a day's a notice or yeah, less than a week's I notice? I think it was like a week, something, something, something. And so that's a lesson that, unfortunately, a lot of young fighters have to learn the hard way. It's probably good that he learned it that night against a uh, against Michael Sanchez, who was uh, two and six at the time. He went a, won a four round decision. Looked good, but you could tell he'd look better if he were in better shape. This fight so far, he's off to a good start, bouncing well. You know, it looks like he's, he's calm. Yeah, he looks calm. He looks good. He looks good. I, I, like, I like that he's staying composed and staying and staying there, staying composed. Well, and I, what I, what I like about both fighters right here is they're both, they are both boxing intelligently here. They're not. They both obviously respect each other and recognize that this is a serious opponent I've got in front of me. Right. And they're not wasting punches. I mean, they're they're they're, they're throwing punches, but they're not they're not wasting. Well, we talked about a fighter could sometimes be a little too overconfident or believe too much in himself, even if he's a, a fighter coming in as the opponent. That worked for Rendon against James Land in his last fight. He had the supreme confidence in himself. 
in this fight, he's fighting very ca uh, he's fighting cautiously but intelligently. Yes, he's, he he's not scared. He's fighting intelligently. He's not trying to steamroll his opponent and, and uh, walk through him. But he caught him with a decent shot there, and he's, he's unloading on Your Highness here. Right hand slip through. Your Highness needs to throw some punches here. Yeah, he, he, he's he's got to fight back. Hopefully, Rendon didn't burn himself out there or gas himself out. You know, for, for the first time, you know, watching Your Highness, uh, you know, he, he's staying composed because normally he comes, after he gets attacked like that, he just goes and throws haymakers from wherever he can, he can throw them. And he's staying composed. He did get hit quite a bit, but he's still composed. So I, I, I do like that. Thing. Well, we talk about young fighters learning things as they move along, even against an opponent who might not be a serious threat. Your Highness fought Michael Sanchez, a two and six fighter in his last fight. At the four round distance, learned what it was like to fight four rounds. Good right hand for Rendon. He may have been pacing himself, expecting this fight to, to go the four round distance, but right now Rendon, just on the basis of aggression, yeah. is I think winning this round. And man, what an incredible story for Rendon if he maintains this. To be twice in his career brought in as the opponent. As the opponent and then start off 2-0. But he's still got a lot of a lot of boxing ahead of him before he can raise his arm in victory against Your Highness Rezak. But if he continues the way he's, he's doing this round, he, he, he's gonna win. Well, we're about to close the first round here. Your Highness Rezak versus Herman Rendon. Rendon, I think, fought, boxed very effectively in that round through just pure aggression. I mean, he just would not take no for an answer, move forward. And it was interesting because we were commenting at the beginning of the round, man, this is a guy who's fighting intelligently, not wasting his punches. And then, boom, like a light switch, the, the Herman Rendon we saw against James Land comes back and he jumps all over. For your Highness Rezak. Yep. And the thing about it is we kind of know that Herman Rendon can, can do that for four rounds. Yeah. We saw it yeah. against Lamb. Yeah. So I would say if I were in your Highness's Rezak's corner, I'd say when he does that, you got you can't just cover up. Yeah. You you got you, you gotta stand and fight a little bit like we talked about in that last round. Exactly. You know, your feet are gone, you know, your back's against the rope, your feet are gone, can't move. Let's His mouth is open right now. Well, he's backing up right now, so he's not, he's not on the attack. And Rendon comes in with another right hand. Your Highness looks like he's looking for that counter punch to that right hand. He knows that Rendon is going to come in with that heavy right hand. But you can get tunnel vision looking for that one counter punch. You've yeah. got to set, you got, it's not just one punch that's going to turn this fight. You're going to have to have you several gotta put them together. Yeah, you got, you got to put more than one shot together. Good left hook from your highness. Didn't quite land on the mark, but certainly, certainly uh, caused uh, Rendon to step back. But he comes back with a vicious body attack. Hard overhand right hand, partially blocked, but you can see it move, even the block punch. He's Rezak back. And your Highness talking to him a little bit. <laughs> well, and we're down again. Doing what he did against James Land, his first, his first round and a half, in the last half of the round two, and just again, staying active, staying he's, busy. He's just staying active, and you know, Your Highness may be getting a false sense of security, being that he's blocking a lot of these punches. But guess what? That was a blocked right hand, but you saw it move him. You yeah. saw it, it just push him back, and that the judges see that. They see yeah. the aggression. It may have been a block punch, but that aggression counts for something. Especially if you don't have anything, you don't have a highlight reel to give to the judges. At the end of the round. Well, guess what? I said, Rezak needed a highlight reel to give to the judges. 
<laughs> with a beauty. That was good. That was that good. Was hey, he spins him around. He did a full 360. Wow. Remember that uh, punch out that, that yes. last guy you fought before Mike Tyson would do that? Yes, yes. Oh. Well, let, let's see. Now, now, becomes, now becomes a game of who's in shape. Who's in Cowboys yeah. out of New Mexico State who never appeared on anyone's radar and for a while there he was he was out playing your highness Rezac yeah and, and, and you know as we're approaching the first round of cuts you're starting to think holy smokes this this undrafted kid from you know a school we never heard of might might beat out this draft uh, this seventh round draft pick. well your highness has shown good. why he is a talented prospect that had people attracted uh, why he was attracting attention from from the NFL scouts, yeah, and you know, it, 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 you know, your highness didn't have a, 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 an extensive amateur career. I think he had under five amateur fights. So, oh, good slip! Wow, but don't try to grab uh, your highness's hand, and your highness just slips back. Pretty slip. Uh, yeah, but he, he didn't have he didn't have an extensive amateur career, so he's learning a lot on 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 the job. Right. Uh, you know, and who knows? I mean, th this this may be better for him. Well, so far I have this fight fairly close. So yeah. I mean, that second round looked like Rendon was was pulling away with the fight, and that one beautiful <laughs> left hook that spun him around. You know, really turn the fight around because I mean, with that being said, Rendon was winning the round because of activity, but he wasn't landing a lot clean. He was just he was bull bulldozing his way in, right doing here. what he's doing right here. A lot of these shots were blocked, and Rezek was just not answering. Well, he answered in a big way to close out the round. The question is, is that enough to win him round two? We don't know. We don't. And round three is his. And as we see with the judges in, in, in our in our first fight, you know, when they when they might have might have scored a 10, 10 8 round, it was a 10 9 round. So these, these rounds could be a lot closer than we, than we think. And we don't know how the judges are seeing it. Good action. I will say one thing I've seen in this round three that is I think that both fighters have come to a realization in round three that we didn't see earlier in this fight. And that is that your highness can hurt Rendon if he lands clean. Right. Rendon seems like he's not quite as reckless as he was. Your highness seems like he's a little bit more active, a little bit more aggressive. And those two things might turn the tide of this fight because this third round is, is very close. And more, more, we need, we, I need more activity. Uh, your highness needs more activity if he, if he wants to. To do anything right now. He's, he's just covering up, covering up, taking the shot. And they look bad. It did, and right there, as we get the 10, 10 second notice, and, and who's the Sugar Ray Leonard in that situation? It's Rendon. He steals the round, or arguably steals the round with that flurry at the last 10 seconds. I think it's a close fight, but your highness should take this out of the judges' judges' hands. I mean, because everybody in boxing knows, everybody can say who's watching this on Athlete and Me TV right now, if you've watched enough fights, you know that you've seen a fight that that, like what we're watching right now, where the fighter that you thought was winning didn't get the win. This is a close enough fight. This is nothing that either fighter should feel confident about going into this fourth no, round. And you know what? To be honest, and in my opinion, I think whoever wins this round could, could possibly win the fight. I think I think that's a very, very safe assessment because I mean, I could. You could have it three three zero red. Dot. Actually, the boxer now. This is something we haven't seen in the first three rounds. Rendon does, but his mouth is open. Looks like he's got a little bit of fatigue. But he's the one initiating that. That's true. Your Highness needs to keep this pressure going. Well, this is the kind of fight where the person who wants it more in this fourth round will probably get the nod. I'm 
up when he gets inside. When he gets inside, he's got to work. He's got to put his punches together. He does, yes. You know, and Rendon can can, can can pretty much do this, I think, the rest of his round. Because he's been winning this round. Yeah, I'll hit him a couple times, do the gold. Uh, John Ruiz hits you a couple times. Right. And grab, grab, grab. Well, that's the thing is, is you want to make a statement in this fourth round for both fighters. Right. But if making a statement means just outworking your guy and winning the round 60-40, that may be enough. If ideally, you want to make a, you want to make a more uh, solid statement than that. But, you know, Rendon is staying active. He landed a right hand there. Your Highness started the round very effectively. He's really slowed down. He's, he's moving forward, but... Looking for that one shot and not keeping up with the punch output that he needs to, to make that statement. And I, and I think we've said that, I've said this, you know, throughout the broadcast. Tonight, Isidro Castillo's, uh, when he matches fights, are usually very, very even, good fights, just like this one we saw here. I'd say give Rendon an easy fight, because he's earned it. <laughs> you know what, he, he did, he did earn it. You know, he come in, and, and uh, like you said, underdog on both fights, both undefeated fighters, and from what it appears like, uh, you know, it looks like Rendon may get the nod. Right, but... If making a statement means just not working your guy and winning the round 60-40, that may be enough. If ideally, you want to make a, you want to make a more uh, solid statement than that. But you know, Rendon is staying active. He landed a right hand there. Your Highness started the round very effectively. He's really slowed down. He's he's moving forward, but he's, he's looking for that near, one, one yeah. shot. Looking for that one shot and not keeping up the punch output that he needs to, to make that statement. And I, and I think we've said that, I've said this, you know, throughout the broadcast. I gotta say, Rendon, I, I'm trying to think of a fighter who literally came out of nowhere like Rendon and made a serious run, but right now he looks like one of these guys who can do that. Yeah. And you know what, I like his confidence, and you know what, I can take anybody at this place. And you know what? Close fight. If he wins, man, that just catapults him up to another level. It does. He's 2-0, and his both of his wins were against undefeated 2-0 prospects. <laughs> that's great. And, and that's, that's great. Yeah, that's, you know, but I, I, I'm going to be honest. If he wins this fight here tonight, Isidro Castillo's, uh, when he matches fights, are usually very, very even, good fights, just like this one we saw here. I'd say give Rendon an easy fight, because he's earned it. <laughs> you know what, he, he did, he did earn it. You know, he come in, and, and uh, like you said, underdog on both fights, both undefeated fighters. And from what it appears like, uh, you know, it looks like Rendon may get the nod. Well, we'll see. It would not be, it would not be the most shocking decision either of us have seen if he does not get the nod. Yeah. There were enough close rounds, because I thought round two and round three were certainly close enough that you could have given it to Rezac. Uh, round four, four, I think Rendon was a little more active, but again, that, that round could have gone either way as well. I think Rendon made a pretty uh, strong statement, strong, made a strong argument that he won round one. And again, it was that one beautiful left hand from, from Rezac that spun around Rendon that made round two uh, such a tough one to score. But, but that, that, was, that was about the only thing that we, that we got to see from... That was. That was the, about the only thing, but it was, it was a nice highlight. But you're right, one punch doesn't win a round. No. Looks you know, like the scores are ready, and you know, for for your highness, uh, if he doesn't get the nod, he needs to go back and look at the very end of the fight and fight the way he fought at the very end, at, right. at the beginning of, of the last round. Well, if he's got a guy who's just bulldozing into him, he's got to have an answer. If you got to just take him out of his his rhythm and clinch, then do that. But don't just cover up. Yeah, exactly. He 
should not get too frustrated on this. You have been around the sport long enough to see fighters in his situation who just throw their hands up and just get frustrated and they don't step back in the ring. This was an education, a costly education for him, but one he can learn from. I, I think we can still see uh, see some, some exciting things from him in the future. Rendon, Rendon as well. That would be a great fight. <laughs> oh, wow. All right, here we go. We got Mario coming to the ring. All right. Hey, I, I, like, I like this. A Rendon calling out Mario. Hey, go after all the big fish. Why not? I love it. I love it, too. You know what? I said... Rendon earned an easy fight. I take that back. Now, this <laughs> no, is what this we great. need. This, this is great. Fight. This Forget is about great. that easy tune up fight. Let's Rendon, make this. Keep going, baby. We like this. We like this. This is, this is what the sports need calling out uh, good fighters, and, you, and you're starting off you know, early. So. I love about this too, especially when you got to fight fighters at this level, and they've got a great heart like Mario and Herman uh, does, and they got a recognition of what they need to do to get to that next level. Yeah. You see stuff like this, because let's be honest, I mean, at the top level, we're getting a lot of guys who are calling out other fighters, and that fight never happens. Yeah. This is a, a situation where two great fighters, two great undefeated fighters, they're calling each other out, and now it looks like we're going to see Herman Rendon try and take another fighter, though, as he fights Mar Mario Gonzalez, hopefully in his next fight. I tell you what, if Mario if Mario is not is not in shape and it does not does not push Rendon back, yeah. Rendon Rendon has got a real shot against Mario because Mario Mario's a, a come forward fighter. Uh, now that he turned professional, as an amateur, he was he was he moved, he boxed, he, he did really well. He used his speed. He turned professional, and then it went out the window. Uh, I'd like to see him go back to that, uh, and he might need that against Rendon because I think Rendon's the the physically bigger fighter. Uh, so, well, Rendon has two things that will beat 90% of boxers uh, in the sport. He's got a good chin. And, and, a, and an ability to move forward. Yeah. And that can beat a lot of fighters. Yeah. Now, as he moves forward, I'd like to see him continue to fight tough opposition and see how he does as he moves forward. But let's be frank, those two things have a good chin and, and a willingness to move forward and take those shots, yeah. to, to, land, to, to take a shot, to land, yeah. uh, land the shot. You know, we saw it here. I mean, he was... He, he just moved on forward the whole time. And, and your highness, Rezak, covered up. And I heard him while we were doing the interview, while the uh, while we had the interview with Herman Rendon, he was talking to promoter Cedro Castillo. And he was, he was, to a certain extent, trying to explain, hey, I was blocking all those shots. I saw him tapping his elbows. It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. It doesn't matter. If the other guy throws 40 punches and lands one of them, and you throw zero punches and land zero of them, then he's going to get that round. Yeah. And, you know, in, in the dawn, you know.
watching the tape right now. You know, if you're if you're to be honest, uh, the number one fighter for Hard Knock Promotion is Mario Gonzalez. Right. He he is a top fighter. So he is a then don't calling him out. Oh, man, I love it. Well, you know what's funny is we talked about I talked about the NFL draft. You know how Rezac was like a seventh round yeah. draft pick. Well, he just he just took that job from that seventh round draft pick. Now he's coming up. And Dylan Nicholson, you know, was a, was a talented young young prospect. He was, make no mistake, Dylan Nicholson uh, had had some mistakes. He, you know, he wasn't a complete package. He was very much a, a work in progress. But the way that Michael Andrews was able to dissect and stop Dylan Nicholson was impressive. And the fact of the matter is, if Ira Herrera is not ready for this fight, if he is, if he's looking past Michael Andrews, and that's going to be a, a, a huge mistake, because Michael Andrews is one tough, tough fighter. And you know what? He's sharp. He, 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 he's a slick, slick fighter. Uh, Ira, from, from what I, from what I've heard and what I've seen in the gym, uh, he, he's an awkward fighter, but he's a rugged and tough fighter. And, and looking at his, you know, at his physique right now, he doesn't look in shape. He doesn't, he doesn't look like he, he, can, he can go these four rounds. Michael Andrews, on the other hand, is uh, came in on weight and, and it looks, looks chiseled. So. I'm excited for this. Well, I'll, I'll be honest. If you didn't know anything about either of these fighters, and you were told one fighter is an unde undefeated and one fighter is two and three, <laughs> hey, you you'd would probably would have it switched. But yeah. But I will say that is that's that's a, that's. A, if you're a fan of Ira Herrera, you've got to be worried about that. That coming in at 172, it does does look like he's a little soft around the midsection. Michael Andrews looks to be in supreme conditioning right now. This this. Both of them fighters look like they're ready to go. David Rios, the referee, excellent referee. We've seen him earlier tonight. The other thing I will notice is Ira Herrera looks pretty dry right now. Yeah. Uh, if I were Michael Andrews, I might jump on him. I might jump on him early and, and see if you can rattle him early. Ira Herrera's last fight, August 7, 2021, in Club La Sierra in Hobbs, New Mexico. First well, round, he did well. Stopped Isaac C. Fuentes in the first round. But again, Isaac C. Fuentes, 0-5, all five losses by knockout. So you don't know what to take from that fight. This is going to be an opportunity for to answer some questions about I Ira Herrera and also Michael Andrews. Because really, to be honest, two and three is a bad hole to get yourself into to start your career. But it's the one that other fighters in the past have come out of. There have been some fighters who started two and three. I think of like Mike Weaver, I believe, his record started at two and three, and he ended up fighting for and winning a heavyweight title. Yeah. So Michael Andrews can still turn it around, but as you said, he's in a main event. A win here can start getting people to talk about him again. It's, it's still a long way from contention. Two and three to contention, even a win over Ira Herrera. Still a long journey ahead of him, but it's it's certainly much easier at two and three than at, at two and four. Right, right. And, and, and you can see the, 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 the skills that they he caught Ira Herrera with a good right hand there. But Ira's game. Ira's coming to fight. He's he is, yeah. Ira's slowing down a little bit here, though. Yeah. 
And my, one of the things I, I'm impressed with Michael Andrews so far is he's, he's really fighting as a total package. He's aggressive when he has to be. He can box when he needs to. So, so far, he's doing everything fairly well. He's, right. You sometimes see that with a with a, a, a journeyman or an opponent. Uh, they do one thing pretty well, but you get them out of their game plan, and, and they don't really have uh, a lot of, uh, shall we say, variety in their arsenal. <laughs> Michael Andrews clearly does. <laughs> no, he, 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 he can fight a little bit. And, I mean, uh, I like what I, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I, I just want, I want him to finish a little bit more. Put, put his punches together and come forward. He, he's got he's got a he's got an opportunity here, showcasing his skills as a main event fighter. Um, and he, and he needs to put the put the pedal to the metal. Well, so far, I'm pretty so far I'm pretty impressed. You know, I I was sold on Michael Andrews after his knockout in his last fight over Dylan Nicholson. Uh, so far, he's looking pretty good. I would like to see a little more activity, but he's jabbing well. If I were Ira Herrera, I would try and get inside that jab because it looks like Ira Herrera is the bigger man, so yeah. he should try and get, try neutralize that jab. Make Michael Andrews have to come up with a plan B. Don't make let, the, don't let him out boxing. Yeah, make it ugly. Grab him, hold him. You know, use that extra weight, that, those extra 12 pounds right. you got. You know. Good round. Clearly, Michael Andrews. Yeah, I think Michael Andrews won that first round. Ira Herrera, uh, I don't know if he was expecting to, to walk through Michael Andrews. If he was, he's, he's, he's got to recognize now he's in with a tough opponent. But Ira Herrera still looks like he's got, got a little bit, from what I've seen in that first round, he's still got some pop in his, his right hand. He could still make this a very interesting fight. I think that first round... He, he learned a lot about his opponent, and he's going to have to adapt a little bit. But right now, one of the things I'm impressed with is Michael Andrews, who's clearly the smaller man, boxing very well, using that jab very well. Try and take him out of that jab. Try and, like you said, make it ugly. Grab him, wrestle him, fight like Her Herman Rendon did in that last fight. You, 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 he has to. I mean, he, he's not, he's not going to win um, boxing. He, he's not going to outbox Michael right now. He, 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 he just can't. He's, he's going to have to take it to another level. Well, and let's also be honest. Uh, he may not be in as good a, good condition as Michael Andrews to go four hard rounds. Exactly. Let's, let's, let's be honest. Michael Andrews looks to be in supreme condition. Yes, yes. But he should be showing that right now. If he's in, if he's in that supreme condition, like right now is the time to to show that. And Michael Andrews definitely, you know, he's gone four rounds before. He's gone four rounds once and gone into the third round twice in his career. So he's been into, when it comes to four round fights, he's been into the later rounds. If you can call the third or fourth round a later round. But so he should know how to pace himself and 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 up the pressure, knowing knowing what knowing how much he has in his tank and how much he's gonna need in his tank. Right. Because the last thing he's going to want is to walk out of this ring without a victory, if it's a draw or a, 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 a decision for Ira Herrera, and feel like he still had something in his tank that he could have left in the ring. Yeah, yeah, you definitely don't want that. Herrera tries to go inside, goes to the body. Oh, good body shot by him. And Herrera... Taps, uh, taps with the jab there, catches Michael Andrews on the forehead. Michael Andrews still bouncing and, and, and moving, showing good ring generalship, moving around the ring fairly well. But Herrera definitely upped his aggression here and made, a, made the second round a lot more interesting. Good body attack for Michael Andrews there. Bigger. You worked out. You said you worked out with Michael Andrews in the past. What do you think is is his his strongest attribute as a fighter? I think his strongest attribute is, is his movement. You know his speed. But uh, I think what 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 he lacks is, is 
when he gets inside, when he gets in a, in a, in a tough situation, he, he goes to cover up and he, and he doesn't fight back. So uh, maybe he's trying to play it safe. You know, I, I, again, his, his speed is, is his greatest asset. Uh, his ring generalship, he, he, he's good at controlling the ring. Um, I just, I just think that whenever, he, when you, when he's pressured, when he's put up against the ropes, when he's, when he's, when he's put in uncomfortable position, he doesn't know how to react. Um, and I love the guy. I think he's, 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 a, good, he's a good guy. I, I just want him to get better. And I would take that as a constructive criticism. Well, he landed a good right hand yeah. there. I will say this. There might be a rhyme to the reason to what he's doing right now because Ira Herrera is beginning to look fairly winded. Yeah. And he, Ira Herrera may not be up for a, for, for a long fight at the rate we're going. Good right, good left hand for Michael, Michael Andrews as Brown close. I think he cemented that round. I've got to say, if I'm in Ira Herrera's corner, I gotta go for broke, man. You gotta go for broke, but it's close enough that that you can't you can't sit on it. You can't rest on it. Right, right. You can't assume you've won then if you're Michael Andrews. You know what? Here, here, here's what I want to see from Andrew right here. Stay inside a little bit, put the punches together. There you go. Some good shots upstairs from Michael Andrews. He's this is the round he scored a knockout over 2-0 Dylan Nicholson in his last fight. He may be looking to, to do the same thing against Ira Herrera here. He's looking good doing that. He is, and I, it looks like he's dialed up the pressure at just the right time. Ira Herrera was slowing down in the second round. He was re Michael Andrews is recognizing that he's slowing down a little bit and upping the pressure. Yep. And, and you're right, maybe maybe he didn't make, you know, hey, look, this guy is not going to be able to move, so let him, let him chase me for the first two rounds. Get him a little tired. I don't like he's doing right now. You, you swing with them big shots and you miss, <laughs> you get tired. It'll take a lot out of yes, you, absolutely. Sir. So, hey, good good job by Andrews. And, uh, and I like what I'm seeing this now. But I got to give it to Herrera. He is still moving forward, trying to land that, that shot. I think, though, he's just got to get his, find a way to get inside. You know, he's throwing some of these right hands from outside, trying to walk in with the right hand. You're going to have to just basically do what Rendon did. Bulldoze. Bulldoze him and then throw the shots inside. Don't worry about smothering your punches. Just worry about getting somewhere within the punching range because he's throwing these punches while on the outside. Michael Andrews is able to time it better and be able to counter them better. This is this is more of what I, I'd like to see from from Hedera, you know, just kind of closing that gap right there. Even if it wasn't effective, I think that would have been a better strategy than, than trying to leap in with the with the right hand. Yeah, even even throw your throw your jab out there, hold and push him, you know, cover up and push him. <laughs> Well, for a guy who scored a knockout in the first round in his professional debut, you, you realize he is in uncharted territory. He's never been in the third round as a professional. And he doesn't... Every fighter thinks that they can go four rounds, six rounds, eight rounds, ten rounds. You don't know until it happens. Ira Herrera is unfortunately having to learn it right now. Like, what, how far can I go in a fight? What's my gas tank? How much... How many miles do I have on my tank? You know, Michael Andrews already knows that, but yeah. And you know, for Ira, you know, having to lose the weight that he had to lose yesterday in, in a two-hour, you know, time frame, you know, did he did he get to put on all that weight back? Did he get to? Uh, uh, good shots by Michael Andrews. Well, again, he came in at 172, well over the weight of his opponent at 160.6. Ira came in at 172. I think he initially came in at 174 yeah. and had to lose a couple pounds. So, I mean, he's got an extra 12 pounds to work with, but I think that, I, I think you're right. You know, we talked about this at the beginning of the broadcast. Sometimes when a fighter has that much of a weight advantage, uh, it, it can mean that they maybe weren't training as, as quite as hard as their opponent, or they they, uh, they they don't have quite the stamina. Sometimes it gives them an advantage. They can they can lean into their fighter. They can bulldoze their fighter a little effectively. But for Herrera, I got.
Roger Mayweather got starched in uh, the opening round in his career uh, because he had come in bone dry in a fight. And Roger Mayweather is not the kind of fighter you knock out in the first round in his heyday. So, I mean, it, it happens, and that's why coaches try and get that, that get fighters a little bit a little bit warm, uh, more warmed up than we saw with uh, Ira Herrera and Mike Landry's, but they certainly are, uh, worked up a sweat here. Closing out this round pretty effectively. I think that Mike Landry is after this fight. I'm assuming that it's going to go his way. Anything can, anything can happen. You know, uh, stranger things have happened in boxing, but he's got to be happy with his performance thus far. His corner's got to be happy with what they've seen. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? I, I, I like to put, hey, the winner of Gondon, Gonzalez fight Andy. I, I think that would be a great fight. You know? Let's, let's be honest, I mean, Michael Andrews, the fighter who started his career at one and three has really turned it around. Yes, yes. And it just goes to show for a lot of young fighters that a setback, you know, for your highness Reza, a setback is not the end of the end of the road for you. If you learn from it, if you build, build on it, very few fighters. Michael Andrews threw an elbow there. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little frustrated, looked like he threw an elbow. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no problem. I was just saying that I think that Michael Andrews is definitely the kind of fighter you you can look to and see a guy who, who stumbled out of the gate and then pulled himself together and is making a good run for it right here. I mean, he's, he looks like he's winning this fight. It was, uh, and incidentally, fans, if you're listening, you're curious, when did Roger Mayweather get knocked out in the first round? Rocky Rocker, same as dry as you look. Closing up the fourth round, Michael Andrews. If you're a fan of Michael Andrews, you've got to be pleased with this performance. Wait for the decision here in just a moment. Ira Herrera versus Michael Andrews. I think uh, I think it's safe to say that we have it both. We both have Michael Andrews winning his third professional fight, improving to three and three. It's impressive to, to have this opportunity to jump into the main event uh, and, and to not only jump into the main event but to capitalize on it like he has here. Again, uh, two and three is, is an ugly hole to get yourself into to start off your career, but it's not one that you can't dig yourself out of. Especially still, early in his career. Especially early in his career. He can still make a run for it, and the way he does it is by performances like this, by winning these fights against undefeated fighters, uh, his last two opponents have a combined record of 3-0, and he's, he's defeated, uh, uh, I'm assuming he won here, but it looks like he's